That's fine. And I pray that you guys open your hearts to the message of Jesus Christ. Do not take this lightly because your soul is on the line. A lot of you guys walk by clueless, not knowing your soul is on the line. And a lot of you guys laugh at this. You guys are laughing now, but you guys are really laughing at yourselves. Because on the day of judgment, you will not be laughing. But you will be wishing I yelled this message louder to you. You will be wishing that I forced it to you on the day of judgment. But God is giving you a chance today. You are still alive, breathing and walking. You still have your two eyes and your still feet. Your two feet. Because God is giving you life. God is giving you grace today. It's only by God's grace that you are alive. Because he loves you so much. This life is not your own. From dust we came, and to dust we will return. Amen. And God loves you so much, he's giving you grace today. And he's giving you salvation. Salvation is free. You don't have to work up to salvation. But it's free. Jesus is the salvation of God. Because Jesus came down and stepped off of his stone. And he humbled himself. The God of this whole universe humbles himself and lives on the same life as us, in the same body as us, in the same flesh as us, and went through the same things as us, except he endured through all of it. And he was sinless. This is why he is the perfect Lamb of God. This is why he is the perfect sacrifice. And this is why only the Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ can save you. Because his blood is pure. You cannot save yourself, but you need the blood of Jesus Christ. And he loves you and he's calling you today. It's not by coincidence that you are hearing this message, but it's because God is calling you today. And he loves you so much. God loves you and he's calling you to a relationship with him. We're not preaching religion. You don't have to try and stop sinning or try and do good works. All you have to do is come to Jesus as you are. Jesus says, come to me as you are. Come to Jesus with your sin and he will purify you. Come to God with your burdens and he will, he will take away your burdens and give you joy and life and peace. Jesus Christ is the only one that can satisfy you because he did it for me. I used to try and find purpose and satisfaction in the street life and fighting people and in robbing and in smoking and lusting after girls. But when I laid my life down for Jesus, he set me free. Now I can live a life of righteousness. I'm not the same man as I was before. I'm not the same person that I was before. In the past, I was always angry. If I were to see you, I would probably fight you or rob you. But now Jesus changed me. He changed my heart. Now I have love inside me because I accepted the love of God. What you have to do is humble yourself because you can have salvation today. You can have your ticket to heaven today. You can have the reassurance that you will go to heaven today. And you can have true peace while you are still on this earth and true joy. And God is giving it to you today. But are you going to accept it? Because you do not have to work up to God. A lot of people, they say it's hard. It's hard to stop sinning. But it's only by the grace of God that you will be able to stop sinning. When God fills you with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to try and stop sinning. All you have to do is surrender your life to Jesus Christ and He will do the work. He already did all the work for you on the cross. We didn't have to die that death on the cross, but we should have. Because the wages of our sin is death. So we should have been on that cross. But it said, Jesus was on that cross. And He died for us so that we can have eternal life. But now it's for you to accept it. It's for you to surrender your life to Jesus. And call upon the name of the Lord. Call on the name of Jesus and you will be saved. Do not take this message lightly. Because on judgment day, you will be crying. You will be crying because it will be too late. But you are still alive and have the chance right now. So don't take your life lightly. Because God, the, the only reason why you have breath in your lungs, the only reason why you're still alive is by the grace of God. God is giving you life today. But He wants to give you everlasting life. He wants you to live after your body perishes. Because a lot of people walk this earth, but they don't know where their soul is going to go after their body dies. And it's only one out of two places. It's either heaven or hell. It's 50-50. God bless you. And the only way you'll know you'll get to heaven is by having a relationship with Jesus Christ, by knowing... God the Father and His Son eternally. And Jesus is offering you a relationship with Him today. And it's free. Because He loves you so much. He sent His Son to die on the cross for your sins. He who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. God humbled Himself because He loves you so much. Jesus didn't have to humble Himself and come down on this earth. But He did it because He loves us. And He gives you free will. He doesn't say you have to turn your life to Jesus Christ. He gives you free will. It's your choice. But there's consequences for your actions, just like in this life. There's consequences for your actions when you live this life, and it's the same thing with God. But you can repent today, and you can have your sins forgiven today. And it's only by Jesus Christ. A priest will not forgive you of your sins and give you salvation, but only Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus. A lot of people get hurt by the church, and they start hating on Christianity. But that was not God. That was the church. And Jesus is saying, come to me today. He's not saying, go to the church. He's not saying, go to the priest. 
Jesus says, come to me as you are. Jesus wants you to come to him. He's the only one that can give you salvation. And he loves you guys. And if he saved me from a life on the streets and from being a reckless boy, he can save you from anything. If he saved me from being depressed and having anxiety and trying to find my purpose in things of this world, he can save you from anything. And he loves you so much. I'm just a nobody. I just gave my life to Christ. Jesus will make you a somebody. Jesus will give you true purpose. He will give you true meaning to your life. Because a lot of you guys walk this life and you're only living for pleasure. But you don't know, you're not living for the true meaning of life. You're just living for the temporary satisfaction. But it will never satisfy you. But God is offering you today. Jesus is offering you the well of everlasting life. When you come to Jesus, you will never thirst again. When you come to Jesus, you will never hunger again. But you will be truly satisfied. You won't have to chase the things of this world. When you come to Jesus, you're not going to have to go back to the drugs, to the sex, to the parties. Because when you give your life to Jesus, you will be truly filled and satisfied. And He loves you so much. And He's offering you life today. Te creation testifies of Creator. This building just didn't, didn't just appear here. But somebody built this building. And it's the same with creation. This creation didn't just appear. But there was an artist, which is God. And God created us all differently. And God created us in His image. When Adam and Eve sinned, they, they brought sin into, into mankind. So now we're separated from God. Adam and Eve, by eating the apple, they destroyed mankind on the tree. But by Jesus dying on the cross, He restored mankind because He loves you so much. Salvation is only through Jesus. It's not through religion. Because all religion does is it makes you pride and it puffs you up thinking you're a good person. But in reality, you're not because we're all born into sin. But when you come to Jesus and truly humble yourself, He will truly give you life and He will set you free from your sins. Because all these religions, they will not set you free from your sin. They will just, you will just try and do good deeds, thinking that you're going the right way. But it says in the Bible that our righteousness, our good deeds is like filthy rags. Our, your good deeds will not save you. You giving money to a homeless person will not save you, but only the grace of God. We cannot reach up to the standard of God by our own strength. This is why Jesus came down to us and He reached His hand down to us because we couldn't reach up to Him. And by Him dying on the cross and shedding His blood, He gives you life. Because the wages of sin is death. The penalty of sin is death. But the blood of Jesus gives you eternal life. When you have blood in your body, you are living, you are alive. And it's a spiritual law. It's the same thing with God. The blood of Jesus gives you eternal life. And God wants to give you eternal life today. And He wants to give you the reassurance that you will go to heaven. He doesn't want you walking around this life clueless. He doesn't want you to be a slave to your sin while you're on this earth. He doesn't want you being depressed. Because a lot of people, they come outside and they put smiles on their faces and hang out with their friends and do drugs and have sex and all these things to fill the void in their hearts, to cure the depression. But now that will never cure you. That's just like putting a band-aid on the wound. But to actually get healed is coming to Jesus Christ. When you come to Jesus Christ, He will take away your depression, your anxiety, your suicidal thoughts, and He will give you true love and true joy and true peace. Jesus said, I'm the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the author of love. God created love, but this world tries to manipulate it. All the devil does is tries and copies what God does. Just like the rainbow. The rainbow does not stand for Pride Month, but it stands for the promise of God that He will never flood the earth again. God loves you so much. And He created you in His image. And He, by sin separating us from God, it means we're, we're already on our way to hell because the wages of sin is death. But by Jesus dying for us, He gives us an escape from hell. He gives us a way to heaven. He gives us a way out of hell because He loves you so much. This is why the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ because He is the only one that gives forgiveness. There's no other religion that actually offers you forgiveness, but only Jesus Christ. Because in the past, in the Torah, they used to sacrifice lambs and goats for forgiveness. They used to have to bring a sacrifice. To be forgiven, you would need a sacrifice. You would need to shed blood. But by Jesus shedding His blood for us, He became the ultimate sacrifice. This is why all your other religions does not bring you eternal life and they don't, for, they don't bring you forgiveness. But only Jesus Christ because He is the only one that shed His blood for you. And He loves you so much and He's offering it to you today. You can have salvation today. Do good works and acknowledge that you are a sinner in need of saving. Acknowledge and humble yourself that you need Jesus to repent.
turn to Jesus Christ and turn away from your sins. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be set free from your sin. You can live in true freedom. Because when I was living for this world, I thought I was free. But I was really a slave to my sin. I was addicted to the drugs. I was addicted to smoking. I was addicted to fighting and robbing people. I was always angry and my heart was cold. When I gave my life to Jesus, He set me free. Because it says in the Bible that whoever sins is a slave to their sin. But two verses later, Jesus says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. And Jesus can set you free today. I'm not the same man as I was before in the past because Jesus saved me. He changed my heart. He gave me true love and true joy and peace. And He can do it to you, for you too today. Because a lot of you guys walk around with fake smiles on your face to act like you're happy. But then when you get back home alone, you still have that void in your heart. And you're still depressed. But the only one that can cure your depression is Jesus Christ. The only one that can fill you with life and everlasting life and peace and joy and love is Jesus Christ. He is the only one. A lot of people, they search in this earth, but they search for the temporary things. But you need to start searching for the eternal things. God says when you seek Him with your whole heart, you will find Him. Seek Jesus Christ today, because He will truly satisfy you. He loves you, Montreal. Repent and believe in the Gospel. Turn to Jesus Christ, the good news, which Jesus laid down His life for us sinners, so that we can be saved through Him and have life. God loves you guys. God bless you, Montreal. George, you want to go next? Finish? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you, brother. God bless you too. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord, Montreal. Yes, you heard it right. He is Lord of Lords and He is King of Kings. And I'm here to lift up His name. I'm here to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. I'm here to tell you that Jesus saved me. He changed me. That's why I'm here on this street corner. To proclaim the goodness of God. To proclaim the life, the eternal life that you can have in Christ Jesus. Montreal, this world will be destroyed. This world will burn by fire. Will be burned by fire. This world will come to an end. Your life will come to an end. Everything you see around you, everything you see around you is temporal. The pleasures that you are running after, the money that you are running after, the things of this world that, are, that you're running after are temporary. They come for a while and then they, 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 they disappear. The Bible says that our life is like vapor that appears for a while and then it disappears. Montreal, I want you to escape the destruction that will be coming on this world. I want you to ex escape the destruction that is coming by hell. I want you to run for your life to the Savior. There is only one Savior that can save you from the destruction that is coming to this world. And His name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Don't run to false saviors. People are running to false saviors like religion, good works. Saints, rabbis, teachers, gurus, idols, these things cannot save you. There is only one that can save you from the destruction that is coming to this world and his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you gotta know the true Jesus. You gotta know the true Lord. Because today many false Jesuses are being preached. I will, you will come back yes. very soon. Yes. But make sure that you know the real Jesus. There is a false Jesus. There is a false idol. False idols in this world. 
There is the Jesus of the Mormons. There is the Jesus of the Catholics. There is the Jesus of Islam. They are all false. There is only one true Savior. There is only one true Lord. And is the Jesus of the Bible, Montreal. You better know the true Lord before you perish and get destroyed in your sins. Judgment is coming to the land. This world will perish. This world will be destroyed. No, it's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and proclaim the word of the Lord. The Bible says, do not be ashamed of the gospel. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. I'm here to lift up my voice to you and to tell you that you need salvation. You need the blood of Jesus. You need the cross. Without the blood of Jesus, without the cross, you will die in your sins. Some of you think they are too smart for God, but you need God. And you need to humble yourself because you cannot outsmart God. And you're not too smart for Jesus Christ. You're not too smart for salvation. You're not too smart for the cross. The, 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 the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. And all the intelligence of the world is like nothing before the Lord. Return to your Creator, Montreal. Stop sinning. Enough sinning. Sin will lead you to hell. The devil will lead you to hell. Unbelief will lead you to hell. Open up the Word of God and start reading before you perish. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. I don't want you to end up in hell. The will of God for you is not to be destroyed. God wants to give you eternal life. God wants you to give you His love, His forgiveness, His joy, His peace, His salvation. But you got to believe in His Son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Do you know that Jesus Christ is real? And He's not just an illusion. He's not just a person that you read about in a book. You can have a relationship with Him. Hallelujah. And if you call upon Him in prayer, if you say, Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, show me Yourself. Lord Jesus, show me the truth. He will show up. He will come. Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Knock and it will be open to you. Seek and you will find. If you seek God with all your heart, you will find Him. Hallelujah. If you seek Jesus with all your heart, you will find Him. What is the proof that Christianity is true? What is the proof that the Bible is true? What is the proof that Jesus is real? Is that when I have sought Him, when I called upon His name, He saved me. He touched me. He revealed Himself to me. And if you humble yourself today, if you call upon His name today, you can have a relationship with Him. You can be saved. Do you believe in Jesus? You want some water? Sure. God is good and God loves you so much. You're welcome. Jesus loves you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, in this hot weather, drinking some cold water makes us feel so much better. I, I, I am here to tell you that Jesus has the waters of life. Whoever drinks from Jesus will never thirst again. If you drink this water, you will thirst again. But if you drink from the Spirit of Christ, you will never thirst again. You will never thirst again. What are you drinking from? Are you drinking from the things of this world? Are you drinking the, the sins and the pleasures of this world? Trying to be happy, trying to have fun? What are you trying to drink of? Drink from Jesus. Believe in Him. Receive His Spirit. 
and you will be saved. You will be truly satisfied. You will have eternal life. You will never thirst and hunger again. Jesus said, he who believes in me, rivers of living waters will flow out of his belly. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus has the rivers of the living waters. If you believe in him, if you receive him, if you call upon his name, rivers of life will fall out of your mouth. Hallelujah. You're going to call upon him. You're going to believe in him. What, what did Muhammad do to you? What does the Quran do to you? What does your religion do to you? Jesus filled my life with the rivers of life. Jesus satisfied me with joy and peace and love. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. What can Muhammad do to you? What can Buddha do to you? What the gurus of this world can do to you? Jesus gave me eternal life. Jesus saved me from hell. Jesus saved me from sin. And He can save you too. He can save you too, sir. God loves you so much. Read the Bible. Open up the scriptures. Search for the truth. Each one of you are, is responsible to search for the truth. What are you searching for? What are you looking after in yeah, this yeah, world? Yeah, yeah, are, you, are you searching for pleasure? Are you looking after temporal things? Are you looking for, 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 for sin? What are you looking after? Look for the truth. Yeah. Seek after God. Amen. Call upon the name of Jesus. Yeah. Open up the Bible and you will find the truth. Amen. And the good news is that the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. Whoever, whoever comes to Jesus will know the truth. And the truth will set him free. The truth will transform his life. Jesus is the truth. Muhammad is not the truth. The Quran is not the truth. Hinduism is not the truth. The truth is in Jesus. And you need to know it. I want you to know it. That's why we are here on this street corner distributing free Bibles and tracts. Because we want you to be, we want you to know the truth and we want you to be free. We don't want you to be deceived. The devil is a liar. The Bible says the devil has blinded the eyes of the unbelievers. Many of you are walking in darkness. Many of you are blinded. You do not see. You think that you are just here for a temporal time. Or you think that you are here forever. I don't know what you, what's going on in your mind. But I'm here to tell you to come and know the truth that you, it is found in the Bible. Come and know the truth that is found in Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and the, I am the life. And no one can come to God the Father except by me. Do not be deceived. Many false prophets are rising. There are many false prophets. There are many deceivers in this world. There are many, so much deception in this world. Many people are deceiving us. You know what is the biggest false prophet in this world? Is the media. What you're watching on the TV. What you're watching on, on, on in these movies and Hollywood. This is the biggest false prophet that is broadcasting spells upon you and deceiving you. They are casting lies upon you, putting you in strongholds and bondage. But Jesus said, I have the truth. I am the truth. And whoever will know the truth shall be free. The truth will set you free from the lies of this world, from the lies of the devil, from the lies of the enemy. They're keeping you in bondage, in the chains. You know, you know, the chains of religion. The chains of works. Works-based salvation. The chains of sin. The chains of darkness. The chains of drugs. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves you so much. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you. He's your Savior. Remember that. Remember that. He died for you and He loves you so much. He's your God. There is a God that created you. Don't be deceived by what they tell you that there is no God. There is a God that loves you so much. He's your Father. He will take care of you and provide for all your needs. Hallelujah. And Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is for children like this. The, the kingdom of heaven is for the, 
the children. And you're going to become like children to enter the kingdom of God. You're going to be converted and become like children so that you can enter the kingdom of God. If you're walking in pride, if you're, if you're thinking that you're too smart for God, if you're walking in, in, in your own deception, you will never be able to know God. You've got to humble yourself. You've got to become like a child. You've got to call upon the name of Jesus. You've got to believe with a pure heart. And you will see God. You will end up knowing God and having a relationship with Him. I am here to proclaim Montreal that Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is alive. He's not dead. And the proof that He is alive. If you call upon His name, if you say, Jesus, save me, He will come to your life. He will come into your heart and save you when you truly repent. Hallelujah. As I said so much, this sin will lead you to destruction. Sin will separate you from God and true peace. Sin will send you to hell. Yet God died for us. God, Jesus Christ, died for you. Hallelujah. Don't continue in sin, man. Jesus can set you free. He loves you so much. He's the true God of the universe. He's the Savior of the world. Jesus loves you so much. No matter what, no matter what you've done in your life today, if you come back to God, you can be forgiven. You can be set free. You can be reconciled with the Lord. No matter what you've done, no matter how, how ugly are your sins? No matter how, how, how dark is your life, no matter, no matter how depressed you feel, no matter how lost you feel, many of you today are walking around and they are lost. But Jesus is the shepherd of our soul. You can be found in Jesus. Return to God. Return to the Lord and you will be found. Like the prodigal son who was dead. The prodigal son was dead, but then he became alive when he came back to his father. Many of you have forsaken God. Many of you have forsaken the truth. Many of you have gone to a foreign, foreign land, a far land, to enjoy the pleasures of this world, to yet to discover that the things of this world cannot satisfy your soul. The, the pleasures and the sins of this world will make you go deeper and deeper into darkness. But Jesus is always standing and waiting for you to come back to Him. He's waiting for you with a wide open arms. Come back, my son. Come back, my daughter. Come back and know life. Come back. My child, I love you so much, I died for you. Come, come to me and find rest. Come to me and find peace. Come to me and find true joy. In His presence there is fullness of joy. At His right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. And in his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. God bless you, sir. Dwell in the presence of the Lord. What do you want? You want to be happy? You want to be filled with joy? You want to be filled with peace? Don't go to the bar. Don't go to the club over there. But go to the church. Come and worship the Lord with us. Christ Forgiveness Ministries, where we exalt the name of Jesus. Do you know what happens when you lift up the name of Jesus? Do you know what happens when you worship the Lord? His presence comes down from heaven. And in His presence there is fullness of joy. In His presence there is love. In His presence there is freedom. In His presence there is holiness. In His presence there is a transformed and changed life. You do not have to stay the same. You do not need to repeat the same cycle again and again. This cycle of death, this curse can be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have found the Lord in 2014. I started reading the Bible. I wasn't sure if this is true or not. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm blind. Open my eyes. 
I promise you, that moment when I said, Lord Jesus, open up my eyes. I'm blind. The presence of God came to my life and He opened my eyes. Have you ever had a relationship with God, sir? Do you hear the voice of God? Do you have a relationship with Him? When I came to Jesus, I discovered that I can have a true relationship with God. The Bible says, lift up your voice like a trumpet and proclaim the word of the Lord. The Bible says we are not ashamed of the gospel, for in the gospel there is a power to salvation. Hallelujah. Through the gospel, through the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you can have a relationship with God. Young man, God is calling you to have a relationship with Him. Today surrender. Stop resisting. Stop rebelling. Surrender. Don't continue in your rebellion. Rebellion will lead you to destruction. You cannot rebel against God. God is stronger than you. God is more powerful than you. God is almighty. You are but dust in this world. Stop rebelling against God. Because if we continue in rebellion against God, we will be destroyed. Who, who are we to rebel against our Creator? Who are we to raise up the fist against our Creator? Who are we to question our Creator? God created you for a purpose. And God loved you and gave you life. He gave you your eyes. He gave you the breath in your lungs. He gave you body. This body that you are using to experience pleasure, it's, it's a gift from God. Think about it. What you're experiencing in this life, all the pleasures of this world, is, is because God gave you your body as a gift. Return to the Lord. Seek Him. Say, thank you, God. That's the purpose of it all. So that every knee would bow to Him. So that we would end up becoming thankful for Him. God wants you to worship Him. God wants you to be thankful for Him. And some, one time somebody asked me, why should I be thankful? Why should I worship God? Why should I worship God? You should worship God because God created you and He gave you everything. And to worship God is to, to be grateful to God and to praise Him for His goodness and for everything that He has given you. And to be ungrateful and to start worshiping idols is the biggest sin. Idolatry is a snare that can bring so many curses and separate us from God. Montreal, in the name of Jesus Christ, every curse can be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, darkness will go away. In the name of Jesus Christ, demons will flee. Hallelujah. Because His name is above every other name. Because He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He died for you. He's the resurrection and the life. He loves you, sir. The Lord loves you. And He wants to set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's my message for you today, Montreal. Please open up the Word of God. Open up the Gospel. And start searching for the truth. Start seeking God. Until you find Him. Amen. Seek God with all your heart. And you will find Him. Because God is the most important thing, thing to think about in this world. It's not worth it to waste your life after the pleasures of sin. It's not worth it to waste your life for sexual immorality and porn and adultery and fornication and drugs and alcohol and drunkenness and weed and drugs and lying and stealing and money. It's not worth it to lose your soul for the devil. It's not worth it. Jesus said, what does it profit a man? To gain the whole world and loses his own soul. What does it profit you? To gain the whole world and loses your own soul. Does it profit anything, brother? To gain the whole world and lose our soul? Hallelujah. But if you lose your life for the Lord, you will find it. But if you find your life, you will lose it. 
Oh, hallelujah. God bless you, Montreal. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Brother Paul, Brother Paul, you want to preach? You're her guide, you're her leader, you're her counselor, God. You're her everything, oh God. That means that you will get her through these hard times, God. You'll get her wisdom, oh God. Yes, yeah, oh God, I pray that you make a way. You're going to open up the door. Yes, God, that no man can go, oh God, to, to go and you can see her mother, that she can love her mother, she can minister yeah. to her mother, oh God. I pray that you would just, uh, God, break off the end of what to do. Lord God, and, and they're out here sharing the word of God. Yeah. Okay. Because God is love, and a lot of people need the love of God. A lot of people need the truth. And this is the reason why we're out here. Because Jesus could give you the truth. Jesus is the truth. He could set you free. And a lot of people don't think that they need freedom. A lot of people don't think that they're, 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 there's anything wrong. You know the thing is, if we were to ask majority of individuals, are you, are you, do you believe in slavery? Most people will say, no, slavery is bad. Slavery is terrible. We are against slavery. But yet people are funding slavery. They're involved in slavery just by being a, a sinner. You are a slave to your sins. You're a slave. People say we're against slavery, but yet you are a slave to your sins. And it's only through Jesus Christ you can be set free. A lot of people love their sins. They just love to just to party, just to drink, just to get high, just to sleep around. But you have to repent. Man, you can say amen, but that's 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 keeping you away from God. And one day when we stand before God, everybody's gonna want to enter into heaven. Everyone. There's no one that wants to go to hell. And everybody believes that they have the, 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 the right to enter into heaven. Because I've, I've done some good things. I'm a good person and, and I try, you know, you just got to be good to people. And this is the way that majority of people think. That your goodness could make, make you enter into the kingdom of God. But ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived. Because your goodness cannot get you into heaven. Your goodness is like filthy rags before God. No matter what good works you did. And actually, if your good works can get you to heaven, then we don't need God. We can do it on our own. What is God good for if we can do this on our own? But we need a Savior. We need a Savior to set us free from our sins. We need a Savior to set us free from the bondage of sin. We need a savior to set us free. God bless you, bro. I'm really proud of what you're doing here, man. You know, I recently gave my pledge to Christ, and you know, I'm a little afraid what my parents might think, but you know what? There's people like you that really motivate me and motivate Amen. a lot of others, you know? Amen. And God bless you, bro. Amen. Is, is your parents, uh, what background are you from? Uh, well, my mom's Catholic. Yeah. And, you know, she's okay. She's yeah. She's here with all this stuff. And my dad, uh, Jewish, but yeah. like, and that's the yeah. first commandment I'm breaking, yeah. but you know, yeah. uh, you know, like reading the Bible and everything, I feel good. You know, I was never really, like, connected with my Jewish faith, so, you know, when I read the Bible for the first time, yeah. it was like a drug, you can't stop it. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, amen. 
Where, what church are you from? We're from Christ Forgiveness Ministry. Oh, Wait, I'm gonna give you a, a card. So you can come and. Uh, well, I mean, I'm more. Come and visit. I'm more like into the Catholic stuff, but like, thank you, yeah. thank you, brother. Really yeah. Nice. yeah, yeah. God bless you, man. Can, can, can I pray for your your, your parents, son? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Pray yeah. for my father. Pray for your father. Yeah. Sorry, what's your name? My name's Ruben. Yeah. Ruben and Paul. Paul? Yeah, nice to meet you, nice Ruben. Name. Yeah. I'm just going to lift you up in, in prayer. And yeah, sure. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for my brother, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for his sincerity. Thank you, Lord, for him surrendering his life to you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would touch his household right now, oh God. I pray for salvation over his father, salvation over his mother. I pray, Lord, that you remove every scales from their eyes and, and, and open their eyes to see you. See how great you are. See that you are the true and the living God. I pray for the salvation. I pray for the deliverance, O oh God. And Lord, I pray that you will work through women, O oh God. You will minister through him, O oh God, to minister to his parents, O oh God. Fill him with your presence. Fill him with your power, O oh God, right now. Fill him, O oh God, with the fire of the Holy Ghost, O oh Lord, that you will be able to speak through him and minister to his, his loved ones, to his parents, O oh God. Give him that boldness, O oh God, to declare the gospel, declare the, good, the word of God. And may you be glorified in his life. I declare blessings over his right life right now by through the blood of Jesus Christ over his life. I declare no weapon formed against him shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against him is condemned in the mighty name of Jesus. Be glorified in this life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, man. I, I just encourage you, come and visit us. You can come. We have Bible study and uh, we're not too far from here. And it's good seeing you, man. Yeah. God bless you, man. Praise God. Amen. You know, it's so amazing to be humble to realize, a humble person will realize that they need a savior. A humble person will realize that I need help, I can't do this on my own. This is what a humble person realizes. But however, a prideful person or arrogant person will say, ah, I don't need God. Once you got everything going for you, you got riches going for you, you got wealth going for you, you say in your, your, your heart, I don't need God. I, I got everything going for me. Life is just great. But you know, we get to stand before God. And everything that you have going for you, everything that is going so well in life for you, comes from God Himself. Just the fact that we, can, we have feet, we can walk, comes from God. We have our health, we have our hands, we can work, it comes from God. We have our sight, we see where we're going. It comes from God. God is, is the blesser of our life. Everything that we have comes from God. And most people take it for granted how great God is because we have everything going so well for us we're, we're living our best life those are the prideful person to figure out I don't need God everything's going great for me and when you lose it all it's not a bad thing it's a good thing because when we lose it all then we start to cry out to God when we lose it all then we say hey I need help when we lose it all I need a savior when you're hungry you start that question, God, where are you? When we're on the streets, God, I need you, I need help. But this is what God wants. He doesn't want us to go through this type of suffering. He just wants us to come to Him and acknowledge Him that He is the true and the living God and that we need a Savior. We are so blessed with the things that we have. But regardless, we need a Savior. We have everything going for us, but we need a Savior. Most people don't see anything wrong with the way we're living. We just love our sins. I want to indulge in our sins. But we're here to tell you that you need deliverance from your sins. You need a savior. You know, most people will figure, how, how could I bribe God? One day we would all stand before God. And I, I'm sure most people know that this judgment is coming. Most people know that when I die, I'm going to meet God face to face. And most people know that there, there, there's, there's a heaven and hell is real. And the question is, is, where am I going? And most people will think, well, what can I say to God? How can I bribe God? And that's truly what it is. And the definition of bribe is nothing but manipulation. So how can I get my way into, into heaven? How can I do it my own way? And that's what people are singing. I want to do this my own way. I don't want anyone to tell me what to do. I want to do this my own way. And many people are thinking, well, if I stand before God, I'm going to tell him what I've done. When I stand before God, I'm going to tell you how, how, how well, what great works I've done. When I stand before God, I'm going to tell him how nice I am and how I help, help the homeless and, and, and feed the, 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 the hungry and, and, I, and, I, and I give change to those that, that, that are, are, are less fortunate. 
and people are looking at ways that I can tell God what I've done, that I'm not a bad person. But we're here to tell you that not good people go to heaven, forgiven people go to heaven. In order for you to enter the kingdom of God, you must be forgiven. We all have sin and come short of the glory of God. And the word of God says that the wages of sin is death. Therefore, if the wages of sin is death, is what do we get in exchange for our sins? What do we get in exchange for our sins is death. Is our wages. It's just when we go to work, we get a wage, we get a pay, we get a salary. And what do we get for all of our sins? It's not eternal life. What we get for our sins is death. It's destruction. It's hellfire. It's separation, complete separation from God. But this is the good news. Is that Jesus Christ came to pay the ultimate sacrifice so that you can have eternal life. I can have eternal life. This is the goodness of God. But are you willing to accept it? See, if you reject the goodness of God, you reject the love of God, then where is there any love in you? Many people will think that I'm a loving person, man. We got to stop the hate. I'm a loving person. How is it that you're loving if you reject the author of love? God is the definition himself of love. And if we reject this love, how is it that we can say that we're a loving person? We're not a loving person. If we reject the love of God, we need a savior. We need deliverance. We need the love of God, the true love. Man's love is not the love of God. Man's love is corrupt. And the most songs that are sung is about love. But love is perverted. Man's love is, is, is what you can give me. I only love you if you can sleep with me. I only love you if you could give me money. I only love you if you could give me something in return. And in spite of all that, if you don't love me back, then I can't love you. That's our real love. That is man's type of love. I only love you depending on what I can get out of you. But God's love is pure. God's love is, 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 does it parade himself. Love does it boast of itself. Love is not puffed up. God's love, God is the definition of love. And it's not our definition of love. God's love is so pure. And we need God's love. We need his forgiveness. In order to receive this forgiveness, we have to acknowledge that we need a savior. We can't do this on our own. And a lot of people want to find their own way because they're comfortable in their lifestyle. They're comfortable with the way they live their life. They're just comfortable and I like what I'm doing. I like the that the, 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 my lifestyle, I love my sins. And most people will deceive themselves, say, I know God. How do you know God? Because they, they, they go to a church, they go to a temple, they go to a mosque. They pray a few times a day and they figure that they know God. And they practice some type of religion and they believe that they, they know God. Because what they were informed or what they were told. That they believe that they know God. And they're so far away from God. And the truth of the matter is that you're so, so separated from God. And pride has begun to build itself up within you. And because of this, you hear the gospel, the good news, and a lot of people will reject it. Because, no, 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 it's okay, I know God, I'm a religious person. But religious can be one of the most deceptive ways of mankind at believing that, no, I'm okay with God because, like I said, I went to a church, God bless you, man. I went to a mosque, I went to a temple. This is not going to get you into the presence of God. God wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to get to know you. He wants to know you in an intimate way. And if you reject God, how is it that you can spend eternity with God? If I don't know you, I'm not going to allow you into my house. I just don't know you. But if I get to know you and we develop a friendship, you come knocking on my door, I'll let you in. And that's completely normal. You will do the same thing too. You will let those in that you know and those that you don't know, you won't allow in. And if we reject God and we don't want nothing to do with God, when we stand before God on judgment day, 
How is it that we say, God, hey, you remember me? Yeah, you didn't let me into your kingdom? God will say, I don't know you. Depart from me. The only way that we can receive the truth is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. In order to get to God, it's got to be through Jesus Christ. Many people, I was just speaking with a brother here that was saying, Jesus is not God. And it's unfortunately that a lot of people will believe that. But then when you stand before God, God says, I don't know you. Jesus is the door. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that through him the world should be saved. The world might be saved. It doesn't mean that you will be saved because God has given us a free will. And many people have rejected God. Because of his free will. His free will shows the love of God. He loves us so much that he's given us a free will. And, and I'm speaking to one of my brethren right here too. and saying that we have no free will. So I said, who's controlling you right now? He can't answer that question. But yet he said he has no free will. God has given us free will. And that shows the love of God. He's not forcing his will on us. He's given us a free will. And we're just encouraging you to take the opportunity to get to know God for yourself. Take the opportunity to seek after God. The word of God says that he that seeketh from the truth shall find it. And we encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He is the way. Mesdames et messieurs, on est ici pour vous encourager. La parole de Dieu dit que Jésus nous aime tellement qu'il a payé le sacrifice pour nos péchés. Jésus nous aime tellement qu'on est supposé de souffrir à cause de nos péchés. On est supposé d'être en enfer à cause de nos péchés. Mais l'amour de Dieu Dieu est venu pour, pour, pour être le sacrifice pour tout ce qu'on a fait qui pas selon la parole de Dieu. Pour tous nos péchés. Il a payé le sacrifice pour nos péchés qu'on peut avoir la vie éternelle. Mais on faut repenter. Puis on est ici aujourd'hui, mesdames et messieurs, pour vous encourager de repenter et accepter Jésus-Christ comme Dieu et comme Sauveur. C'est le seul moyen qu'on peut avoir la vie éternelle. C'est le seul moyen qu'on peut voir le, 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 pour, on peut voir pour passer l'éternité avec Jésus. C'est de l'avoir en relation avec lui. Plusieurs personnes vont rejeter Jésus aujourd'hui. Mais le jour de jugement, tout le monde va dire, « Seigneur, est-ce que je peux rentrer euh, dans ton royaume? Est-ce que je peux être part, partie de votre, de votre royaume? » Mais si vous n'avez aucune relation avec Dieu, ce n'est pas possible d'avoir, de passer l'éternité avec Jésus. Ce n'est pas possible, mesdames et messieurs. Acceptez Jésus-Christ comme Dieu et Seigneur. God loves you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We just want to encourage you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but through Him. We need a Savior. We need a Savior to set us free from our sins. And He is the only way. One day we will stand before God. And the society is showing us that the society is encouraging us to don't take responsibilities for your own action. Society is showing us that, the, the, that all the problems that you have is because of your upbringing. Society is telling us that all the issues that we have is not our fault. It's somebody else's fault. Societies encourage you to blame the white man. Societies encourage you to blame the police. Societies encourage you to point the finger and blame somebody else. But ladies and gentlemen, one day we'll stand before God. And when we stand before God, we, there's nobody else to blame but ourselves. When we stand before God, we get to know the, the true definition of accountability. And we just want to encourage you, don't wait. Take accountability for your life today. Take accountability for your actions today. 
take accountability. Take responsibility for your own action. And the greatest action that you can take is receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Ladies and gentlemen, you must come to a realization that nobody here is perfect and that we need a Savior. Many people will acknowledge that nobody's perfect and they'll choose to use that as an excuse. They'll choose to use that to say, this is the reason why my life is not going well. But the reason why your life is not going well is because you need a Savior and you have rejected Him. But it's not too late. The fact that you have breath in your lungs is because God cares for you. The, bre the fact that you are living is because God has given you multiple chances. He loves you so much. He's not a God of anger. He's not a God of wrath. But He's a God of love. And we just want to encourage you to take the opportunity and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Receive Him before it's too late. Because when judgment days come, many people are going to be repentant. Many people are going to be remorseful. Many people are going to be full of regret. Why did I listen to the gospel? Why did I choose Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? Why did I surrender my life? Many people can look at their life and say, well, it's okay because I'm a religious person. But I'm here to tell you that religion will not get you to heaven. Religion is not the way. Religion is not the way, just the fact that you prayed a few times or you find yourself in a religious place as a church or a temple. You have to have a relationship with God. You have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way. He is the only way. He's not just a way. He is the way. And we must have a relationship with Jesus in order to get to know God. God has come down on earth. Jesus Christ has come down on earth to pay the sacrifice for you and for me, for our sins. See, many people want to do things on their own. But we're here to tell you that you cannot get to God. God is way too high for us to reach to Him. He had to come down on earth to deal with our sins, to pay for our sins. And many religions will not deal with sin. Most religions will say, just be a good person. But you have sin in your life. And just like if you were in a courtroom and you have been wrong in your life, you cannot tell the judge, but look at all my good deeds. You cannot tell my judge, well, you know, I help the poor. You can't tell the judge that I've done good actions. If you have killed someone or murdered someone, you think the judge is going to let you go free because you did something nice? You think the judge is going to let you go free because you opened a door for somebody? You think your good works is good enough? I'm here to tell you that the Word of God says that our good works is like filthy rags before God. Just the fact that we broke one of the law, we broke them all. If we broke one of the law, if, we, if there's any man that only sinned once in their life, they still won't be able to enter into the kingdom of God because of their sins. But we have sinned multiple times. And you sin just because you're good at works? Are you a good person? Or because you have a smile on your face that you deserve the kingdom of God? This is pride. And when we're full of pride, we just don't see anything wrong with our life. When we're full of pride, we just believe, well, I'm a good person, you know, I'm, I, why would God send me to hell? Many people will ask that question, why would God send people to hell? God doesn't send anyone to hell. Our sin sends us to hell. Our lifestyle sends us to hell. We choose to go to hell. But we're here today to tell you that there's a way. There's a way to escape damnation. There's a way to escape this eternal separation from God. And this is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. But the thing is, many people don't want even want to have a relationship with God. But you're going to wait to, after life to have a relationship with God. Jesus loves you, sir, but you must repent. He can deliver you from the anger. So do not wait. Many people want to wait till, till they get old. Many people want to wait to the, the last minute to surrender their life to God. They just want to party and have a good time right now. But if you choose not to have a relationship with, with, with a great Christ, how is it you're going to spend eternity with God? How is this possible that we're going to spend eternity with God after we rejected Him all of our lives? All of our lives, spending se our lives separated from God. Saying, God, I could do this on my own. And that's what it is when we reject God. We're saying, I could do this on my own. I find my own way. Ladies and gentlemen, we need a Savior. Every one of us needs a Savior. There's no perfect person. But you know what's amazing about a criminal? A criminal can acknowledge their faults. 
and said, I need change, I need help. But those that are not in prison will look at their lives and say, well, at least I'm better than my neighbor. Those many people will say, I'm better than the next person. This, this is not the way that we can compare our life to individuals, to each. All right, we can't compare our lives to our neighbors and say, well, I'm better than him. So I deserve heaven. We cannot do that. All of our, 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 our righteousness is not good enough. You are saying that you can work your way to heaven. This is what you're saying. Ma'am, what are you going to say on Judgment Day? What are people going to say on Judgment Day? What is going to be your answer when you stand before God on Judgment Day? And God says, why should I let you into my kingdom? What would be your answer? Uh, the, answer uh, the answer is simple. I'm, I'm a Christian Orthodox. Yeah. I really believe in God. Yeah. And... Uh, <coughs> We're going to stay <coughs> face to face to him mm -hmm. at the last day. That's right. That's right. And, and, and about free will, I like... Uh, you can speak Russian? Yes. What did you say? I just said it. You didn't explain it. So, I'm going to let you talk. I'm going to talk. Did I you Jesus well? loves you, man. I don't know why you're so angry. Do you know, God, God can deliver the anger that you have in you. He can deliver that anger. He wants to save you and set you free. What? People need a savior. Many people want to hear, you're stopping the word of God. Why are you stopping the word of God? Why are you stopping the word of God? We're preaching the word of God. We're showing love. Why are you showing so much anger? Why there's so much hate? Where's the love? You want to, God you wants to enter into your house. Let me talk at some you point? Talk? Go ahead. You got something to say? No, no, no. I'll hold the mic. Oh, I'll yeah. hold the mic. I'll you hold the mic. Give me the mic. No, man. no, no. Oh, yes. No, you're not going to hold the mic. Oh, yes. You're not yes. going to hold the mic. Demons, oh, are yes, Demons are manifesting. Demons are manifesting. You want me to speak? I'm going to handle the mic. No, you're not going to handle the mic. Yes, I you're gonna will. Handle the mic. No, no, he'll let you have it. You, if, you. if you want to say, no, you can't be disrespectful. See, I can't oh, let you speak. You're disrespectful like that. F this and F that and everything is cussing and then you want to speak? Is it, is it, you, may, may God save you. May God help you. As we were saying, uh, we, know, we all need a Savior. And you know, this is a perfect example of how we need a Savior. A lot of people have anger. Anger in us. And we need deliverance. Am I an example? Even if you don't know me? You're an example. You're an example. You came here cussing. You came here cussing, he you're angry. Even know me. Let's go. I, I don't let, need to know you. I just, you out of the, the heart, out of the yeah. mouth comes what's in the heart. Out of the mouth Are comes the abundance of what's in the heart. And it's Are anger, but God can set you free. Are you able to change? Shut the fuck up. I'm not Are you able to change? It's, it's unfortunate. God wants to save us and deliver us from our sins. We all have sin. And this shows the anger that many people have especially when it comes to the word of god when people don't want to hear the word of god when people are manifesting this is spirits that are manifesting manifesting against the word of god you know people don't mind if i was playing music here if i was playing a guitar i was making music even if i was cussing it would be acceptable if i was cussing if i was swearing if i was out here rapping and i was cussing and swearing there'd be no problem but you bring the word of God and spirit starts to manifest, people are getting angry. This is because we need a savior. And the enemy is upset, the devil is angry. But we just want to encourage everyone that we need a savior. We need deliverance. I was in this world. I was living in this world. I was living for myself. I was pleasing myself. I needed a savior. And Jesus Christ came and saved me. Jesus Christ came and set me free. He set me free from anger. I had anger, like the same way how she has anger. Jesus Christ is probably the Antichrist. Fuck Jesus Christ! Uh, uh, Praise Satan, uh, everyone! Yeah, right. That's what no, I wanted it's to not do. Right. You're gonna pay for that. Yeah. No, I'm not. So, there you go. She's, she's giving glory to the devil. She's giving glory to the devil and she's proud of it. 
kind of me. Yeah. We can deliver you, you right now. Them? Let's go. Let's go. Let's Jesus, go. Jesus can deliver you. Go you go on. We just If you want the demons to come out, we can cast them out. Jesus can deliver you. Go on. Amen. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. For you the spirit. Spirits are spirits are manifested in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind every spirit that is coming. We bind you around you, powerless. No weapon formed against the body of Christ shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you is cast down. In the mighty name of Jesus, we destroy every assignment and this lady right now. We destroy every demonic works. We render it powerless in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Exactly where the demons are going. L. So if you want to be free, humble yourself and we can pray for you. This is a lot of talking for yeah. yeah. okay. yeah. yeah. okay. yeah. 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 She's yeah. listening. Do you want to be free? I am already free. No. You're free? You are not free. Look okay. at well, listen. Oh, you. Look at you. It's this okay. So Do you want to be free? You want to be free? Go save the lady. No, no, you're not free. Yes, no, no, you are not. Free. Listen. No, I'm not listening to you. I am already free. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Why? Christ. Everyone, silence yourself. Wicked do spirits. I look like someone who needs wicked to be spirits, exercised. I bind you right now. I do not need to be exercised, you fucking son of a bitch. Wicked spirits, I bind you yeah, right, right now. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I bind yeah, you right, right. now. Just Jesus because Smith. you have a mic. No, no, no. You have a mic. Not happening. Hey, leave her you up. will not get In over Jesus You name. will In not Jesus get name. over me for a fucking. In Jesus' mighty name. No, this I bind every one of you. I'm telling you, you are holding on to these Do demons. I and if you like want to be set free, if you want to be set free, Do I look like an exorcism? If you want to be free, Do don't, don't touch our stuff. Don't touch Do our stuff. I look like an exorcism. You're drunk. You talk about them. Hey, you talk about them. If you want to be set free, we can help you. If you don't want to be set free, we're not here to help this you. Is not allowed. We're not here to help you if you don't want to be set free. Oh, because you are the savior. Kanye West kind of. You see, there's... there's... You see, there's a woman that has many demons in her life. Hallelujah. And she doesn't want to be set free. You cannot help anybody that doesn't want to be set free. If you love your demons, you can keep your demons. If you want to go to hell, you can go to hell. God is not forcing anybody to be saved. You see, the thing is, the people that came to Jesus and got set free, there was something inside of them saying, I need help. If you want help, we can help you. We can set you free. But if you got demons in your life right now, like this woman that smells like alcohol, cursing the preachers and saying hail satan if you love satan that much have satan if you want hell keep hell if you want demons keep demons yes you, you see something must be wrong with this lady something must be wrong because when the preaching of the gospel of jesus christ affects you so much that you cannot even stand the name of jesus then you know that what we are doing and preaching is powerful. It's agitating demons. They always show up when Jesus Christ is preached. And that's why we preach. You're seeing in front of your face someone possessed with demons that doesn't want to be set free. Now, the future for somebody that wants to keep their demons is hell. It's destruction. And that's what's going to happen to this world. If you are here today living with demons, praising the devil, living in drunkenness, living in sin, if you continue in this path, you're going to end up crazy. You're going to end up in the psych ward. And you're going to end up in hell. 
But if you're here today and you're saying, I got, I, I have a problem, I need help, I need deliverance, if that's you, you can be set free. You can be set free whoever you are, rich or poor. God is reaching out to you. God is calling you. God is asking you, do you want to be saved? Whoever you are, do you want Jesus? Do you know why you need Jesus? Is because when you are in bondage, right? it's okay, it's okay. God is calling her. You, God wants you to hear this. You see, when you're in bondage, you need to get freedom somehow. You need to look somewhere. You know, sometimes people go to the, the doctor and argue with the doctor, but they need the medication sooner or later. Sometimes people go to the bar, they're looking for help. You wouldn't be here if you weren't looking for something. It's just you don't want to humble yourself. I want to let you know that God loves you, whoever you are. There's something inside of you that was made in the image of God, but you allowed the devil access to your life. And that's why you're struggling. That's why you're wrestling. That's why you're fighting the wrong person. You're fighting the wrong person. And you're trying to shut up the wrong person. The voice of God is reaching out to you. He's knocking at the door of your heart. And he says, I stand at the door and knock. And whoever hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Do you know that there's... God is knocking at the door of every one of your hearts. doesn't matter what your religion is. You can be Muslim. This is a jinn. There's a jinn inside of somebody. You could be Muslim. You could be Hindu. You could be Christian. It doesn't matter what your religion is. God is knocking at the door of your heart. He wants you to worship the one true living God. He wants you to come back into a relationship with Him, whoever you are. But some people will fight. Some people will even try to silence the preacher. Is this not what happened in the past? They stoned the prophets. They killed the prophets. They threw away the Bibles. They threw away the Holy Scriptures. But guess what? God keeps a certain amount of people here as a reminder that God still exists and God still loves you. I want you young people to know, everybody here to know that God loves you. He loves you so much that He's willing to send Jesus Christ to die for you. Now you might not understand that, but I'm going to explain that. Suffering on behalf of somebody else demonstrates love. When your mother suffers on your behalf, it's because she loves you. When your father goes to work long hours just for you, it's because he loves you. When the prophets came and were stoned and were crucified and killed for you, it's because they love you. And when God himself is willing to knock on the door of your heart and to go the extra mile to even send his son to die on the cross for you, it's because he loves you. It's all about love. And it's this love that God is asking you, do you want to receive inside of your life? And it's an option. You don't have to accept God in your life. You can live your own life. And I guarantee you, a life without God is a life of misery. It's a life of confusion. It's a life without purpose. It's a life without meaning. It's a life chasing after the wind, chasing after vanity, looking for hope in all the wrong places. That's what life without God looks like. But life with God is life with purpose, life with meaning, life with joy, life with peace, life with hope. And God wants to give you hope. If you've messed up today, how many of you have messed up at any point in your life? Put up your hand. You, you sinned, you did something wrong. This guy's Mr. Perfect. Hey, you, you've done something wrong. Yeah, some of y'all looked at the wrong things. I've done that. I, I, I've been in the wrong places. I've been there. But guess what? You know what that did to me? It didn't bring me any better uh, uh, to a better place. It didn't give me peace. It gave me shame. It gave me feelings of, of, of corruption on the inside. Guess who can, guess who can fix that? Jesus can fix that. God can fix that. God is saying, look, I can come into your life and heal your broken heart. I can give you peace. I can forgive you. I can call you into my glory and I can do something inside of you that nothing else can. God wants to come into your life and give you the love that you've been looking for. Now, I want to I, I wanna ask you guys something here today. If you're listening, I know you're here and you're seeing a, a crazy lady, you're seeing a demon manifest through a person. But Jesus Christ, God, Yeshua HaMashiach is knocking at the door of your heart. And if you can hear with your heart, your spiritual heart, and say, you know what? I'm not going to deny God like this lady. That's what it looks like. That's what someone denying God looks like. 
Someone who wants to live in sin looks exactly like that woman. I believe God allowed that just for you to see what you look like. You look like that woman every time a preacher's preaching and you walk on by, you look like that woman. Every time you curse the preaching, you're, you're looking at that woman who's cursing the preacher. Every time you're saying, Hail Satan, this lady's saying, Hail Satan. Every time you walk by a church, every time you put down the Bible, every time you say, I don't need God, you might as well say, say Hail Satan too. You're a Satanist just like she is. She is a reflection of a lot of you here. Not everybody, but a lot of you. And that's why God is saying to you today, look, look with your own eyes what you look like in my eyes. You are a sinner, you are a rebellious person, and you are going straight to hell if you continue in that path. Now I'm here to tell you there's hope. You don't have to remain in that state. You don't have to go that route. You don't have to be possessed. You don't have to go down to the wrong places. You can be saved today. And if there's anybody here today that's saying, you know what, that's me. I need Jesus. I want to be saved. I need the hope of God in my life. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand and say, yes, I need forgiveness. Amen. There's one, there's two. Amen. There's three, there's four. Hallelujah. Anybody, any, anybody else here today saying, you know, I need God in my life. I'm not going to deny God like that woman. I'm not going to go against the things of God like that woman. I'm not going to walk past this preacher and reject the message like that woman. But I'm going to say, you know, what? I need Jesus. I need God. I'm not going to be one of those, those blasphemers. I'm not going to be one of those hypocrites. I'm not going to be one of those people that say, you know, I'm good without God. I know I need God. How many of you here today can put up your hands and say, I need God? Amen. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Very simple. Very simple. If you need God in your life, you need to be humble and say, yes, God, I need your mercy. I need your love. And I receive your love. Now I'm going to pray a prayer for anybody here that's saying, I want to receive the love of God. And I need God in my life. And it's as genuine as you want it to be. If you truly believe that you need the mercy and forgiveness and love of God in your life, you, you just helped my preaching. Thank you. Thank you. You, you get, thank you. God bless you. Even, the, even God uses the devil. God uses the devil to achieve his purposes. All of these people want to accept Jesus because of you. Thank you. We're going to say a prayer. We're going to say a prayer today. Thank you, devil. Thank you. I praise God. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. You know you're touching me, right? Yes, you know, I could God. knock you out. I could really knock you out. I would have a right by law to knock you out for you touching me. You know that, right? No, but I'm not. I forgive you. I forgive you. You know why I forgive you? Because all you're doing is helping the gospel be preached. Amen. So we're going to pray a prayer. For all those, raise your hands for those of you that are saying, I need God, I need the mercy of God, I need the forgiveness of God. Amen. Thank, thank you, devils. Thank you, devils, for helping me preach the gospel. Pray this prayer with me, okay? Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are one true God. I believe in you. And I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I accept your mercy. I accept what Jesus Christ did for me. I come to you today. I humble myself to you today. And I welcome you in my life. Thank you, God, for coming in my life. Thank you for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of you prayed that prayer honestly? I, I, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not, it's not about, okay, a few of you. Amen. A few of you. It's okay. Some of you don't even know you need to still study. We got some tracks here. Uh, can, if you guys can go around and anytime, you know, give them some tracks so you know. We have church tomorrow. Church tomorrow. And um, it's going to be a powerful day for those of you that want to come. It's very close. It's very possible. Thanks to the devils. Thanks to the, this devil that was used actually by God to bring people to God. Hallelujah. Actually, thanks to God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is great. There's nothing that can take us away from the power of God. When the will of God is for someone to get saved, it doesn't matter how many devils show up. It doesn't matter how many crazy people come. God is going to accomplish His purpose. So if you're here walking down the road wondering about what we're preaching, we're preaching about Jesus Christ. 
and Him crucified. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who is coming again to judge the living and the dead. And if you are here today living in your sin, your sin will find you out. Your sin will bring your own condemnation. Your own behavior will destroy you. There is a right way and a wrong way. There is a narrow road and a broad road. And many go the broad road. Every year, every day, people are walking around thinking that the more sex they have, the more better they will be. But the reality is the sex doesn't last. The porn doesn't last. The ejaculation doesn't last. The orgasm doesn't last. All it leaves you is with an empty spirit and an empty conscience, especially if it's done wrong. When we do the wrong things, it leaves us with emptiness. It leaves us in a deluded state. But God is saying there is a better way. I got a way that will leave you with peace. Peace and joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that is by getting saved. That is by receiving the blood of Jesus Christ. That is by receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. That is by getting born again. Being born again. It's just an encounter with the living God. You need to encounter the living God. Have an experience with God. You can't be the same every single day walking in the same vain lifestyle and think that there's nothing better. There is something better. It is God. And when you get God inside of your life, you will know that God is in your life because your eyes will be open to the truth. You will have joy that you never had before. You will have peace that you never had before. You will have power that you never had before. All because you encountered the living God. Hallelujah. You've encountered the living God. The living God. The reason why I call Him a living God because He's a life-giving God. He's the one that gave life. He's the all-powerful. God bless you, sister. God bless you. God is the one that can wake you up again. He's the one that can raise the dead. He's the one that can heal the sick. He's the one that can open the eyes of the blind. Guess who did that? Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. No other prophet opened the eyes of the blind. No other prophet rose the dead. No other prophet walked on the water. No other prophet calmed the winds and the waves. But there is one man that did it. His name was Jesus. Yeshua, the one we call Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And He's coming again. He's coming again. You know, the more that we live in history, look what happened over the last three years with all these vaccinations. And many of you people bowed to the system. You went along with it because you wanted to keep your jobs. Do you know the Bible says that there's coming a day when you're going to have to take a mark? It's called the mark of the beast. You know what that means? It means the mark of the system. The Babylonian system. The corrupted system. Many of you are bowing even right now. Just like that woman, bowing to the devil, bowing to the system, bowing to the leaders of this world that are corrupt. And you are even willing to take the mark, the marks, the things that identify you with the corruption of this world. And you have no conscience anymore. The world is coming to a place where nobody will have a conscience. Where the Bible says that there's coming a day where there, there will be a, a, a lovelessness in the hearts of man. There will be a love for the things of this world in the hearts of men. A love that's so passionate for corruption that even they will kill Christians. Even they will reject God. They will remove God from the places it should be. God should be on the throne, not man. God's ways should be exalted, not man's ways. God's word should be teach, taught in the school systems, not this corrupt stuff. And so now we're left to the streets. The real believers are left to the streets. And soon they're going to take us off the streets. They're going to say that the Christians, the ones that preach the truth, are the messed up ones. We are the, 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 the deluded ones. But we're the ones saying that marriage still exists between a male and a female. Not two women. Not two men. It is a male and female. There's an Adam and Eve for a reason. We will not live if we, if we don't have a mother and a father. And if you want to pro propagate and promote all the wrong teachings and philosophies, you're going to end up in the grave just like those who do. Go ahead. Teach your children that it's okay for your, for your boy to sleep with another boy. Go ahead. He's not going to have a future. Your line will be cut off because you've embraced sin. And that's the destruction. That's the consequence of sin. The wages of sin is death. 
You want to live in sin? Go ahead. Your line will be cut off. Maybe the world will be better off without your line if you continue in that way. That's your own condemnation. Your line will be cut off. You won't have any peace. There's no peace to people sleeping around all day. There's no peace for people that break every principle in the book and thinking that they're going to have happiness. You can't have happiness without God's word. You can't have happiness without God. You can't have good without God. I love how the English language describes God. God, G-O-D, and good means G-O-O-D. You need God to have good in your life. You want to take God out of your life, you will have no good. You know, it's common sense if you just break it down. See, a lot of people don't take the time to read the Bible. A lot of people don't take the time to pray. A lot of people don't take the time to think. And that's exactly what the devil wants. The devil wants, the devil wants, the system wants to corrupt every one of you. Opening up pubs at every corner just so that you don't think. God bless you. Just so that you don't think. I'm full of hate. Why, why am I full of hate? Tell me, tell me. I don't understand you. Come, you're just running away saying I'm full of hate. Well, Aren't we friends? You are she has a, uh, friends? Yes, my grandma. Let's be friends. My dairy you want to be my friend? Or are you full of hate? I am not full of hate. I'm not full of hate. You want to be my friend? Or are you full of hate? Shake my hand. Because I'm not full of hate. Are you full of hate? You're not even letting me talk. No, I'm just. Uh, uh, now you're touching me again. You want to hear her? Now listen, now listen, 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 listen. This is chill. Man, you know. Very well self control. I, I practice for boxing every day. <laughs> love you. I love you. Just chill. Just chill. Take a chill pill. You got a shirt with saying friends on. You want to be my friend? Because you said I, I'm full of hate. And, I, and I, you won't even shake my hand. So who's full of hate? I'm not full of hate. I'm, I'm willing to shake your hand. I don't even know where your hand's been. And I'm willing to, sh I'm willing to shake it. So, yes, you can. No, because you cannot talk. Because everyone's... You see, you're not letting her talk now. Are you going to let her talk? The, the opposite of friends is not enemy, it's just not caring about somebody. The truth is, I'm sorry, I do not care about people full of hate that stand on the street yelling about how others are going to hell and stuff like that. But the only thing I see, you don't even want her to talk. The only thing they do is preach. They don't help no, others. I just want to they don't give around. Because I know it's They're not, be... but he's spreading in the community. They're just full of hate. He just places himself above people and they're like, look at me, how mighty I am. And you're only going to reach me if I do this, but you're never out giving out to people. You're never sharing, you're never looking, you're never, I don't know. You're just out there telling people they're going to, they're going to what, what, sin. What, okay, what well, well, I, can choose, you pick and choose from the Bible, which I have read because I too was raised Catholic. Thank you, me uh, too. But you pick and choose which things you're going to discriminate other people about, okay? Say, you choose that, you chose the thing about a man in a, in, in a, a man and a woman lying together, but you're also wearing mixed cottons, mixed blend. Um, I'm sure there are other many things that I you think it's actually 100% cotton, everything I'm wearing right now. Is it? Yeah. You want to show off labels? No, I think it's not labels, man. I got this in Ethiopia. Yeah, sure. It's actually real pure. Yeah, sure. Does that destroy Maybe your right. argument? No, because my argument is not just about the cottons. It's that you don't pick and choose which things you're going to discriminate other people about. No, because my argument is not just about the cottons. It's that you pick and choose what things you're going to discriminate about instead of going about Jesus' actual message, which is about loving thy neighbor. Jesus didn't go around preaching it to prostitutes. He loved them. He gave their hands to them. And that's how you actually share, how you make things better. Not by telling people, I'm better than you, stop what you're doing, but by showing them the good side of you and inspiring them. Well, 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 that's what I was trying to ask you. I was like, would you shake my hand? You're not even showing any good to me. I mean, I mean, you might call me an enemy, a friend of me, or some other thing, someone you're not interested in. Look, I'm, I'm saying, regardless of who you are, I'm willing to shake your hand. So I think you're misjudging me, misrepresenting me. You just came a second ago, hear one thing, and you assume... Hold on, I listen to you, listen to me. You, you assume my entire life... You don't know what I do behind closed doors. You don't know who I feed. You don't know who I help. You don't know what I do. You don't even know my name. But you're not even willing because you're full of hate. Yet you have a word called friends on your shirt. So might I suggest to you the greatest friend that you could ever have is Jesus Christ. There's no other friend that would die for you except Jesus Christ. And that's what we preach. We want to preach to people like yourself hope. 
We want to tell people that you don't have to take your life, regardless of who you are. Yes, I don't agree that women should sleep with women. I don't, because it's not natural. I don't believe men should put their penis in anuses. Why? Because it's not natural. But do I love them? Absolutely. Why? I, yeah, yeah, now you're getting aggressive here. Are you willing to shake my hand yet? You're monologuing. Okay, no, I'm not monologuing. I listen to you. It's called listening to me. Are you, okay, I will give it back to you, but I did listen to you. So we're gonna start. We're gonna start afresh. Okay, hold on a second. We're gonna start afresh. My name's David. Would you shake my hand? Sure. What's your name? My name. I have many names. You can call me Rock. Rock. Okay. Nice to meet you, Rock. Thank you. So let let's talk, Rock. Let's go. What do you, what do you want to say? What I want to say is, first of all, um, what was I gonna say? I'm not assuming love. I haven't said anything about your life. My argument about uh, cotton was about some cotton. Let's get him to turn around and show the audience. About. Meanwhile, there's other things. That we're all we're all guilty of something. We all sin in some way or another. But you all pick and choose on what to discriminate about, place about, and you're like you're going to hell because of that. But according to the Bible, we're all going to hell because we've all done one thing or another, right? But why should these people? Why should thy neighbor? stop their sin more than we should stop the sins that we're doing. I think that we should review ourselves first very hardly before coming into others and telling them you're going to hell because of that. Like I think you should really like we all should look at stuff in the mirrors before going to others and just judging. Like we don't know their lives either. And no, I, the truth is I think like I don't know, it's kinda of weird to be thinking about other people having sex all the time. Like that's literally none of your business. Like, go help in the community shelter. People are thinking about what other people do in their bed. I'm just laughing at you. Okay, so you, you made a lot of comments like all I do is think about people having sex. There's a lot of things that you I said. That. You, you just said that. You can go back on the live stream. But, but what you just said, I, I agree with a lot of things. Introspection. This is what I teach. I mean, the first thing I do is look at myself, all the issues that I have, the things that I need to change. And I do need to change. I do need to repent of whatever sins is in my life, just like you. And that's exactly what we preach. Sin brings forth death. You see, the devil wants you to go. And if you want to go, that's fine. If you want to disrupt the conversation, you see, you see what happens. When the truth starts ministering to somebody, the devil comes and takes them away. You see, you see that? You see that? Because I was breaking down what she asked and what she really wanted to know, but the devil doesn't want her to see, be free. A lot of spiritual warfare, a lot of things are happening right in front of your eyes, and all you need is spiritual eyes to see what's happening. We saw devils right in front of our eyes, demons, manifesting in a person. We saw a person that's so hardened in heart that they don't want to repent. And that brought the salvation of many people at this street corner. The salvation. Because God's plans will not be thwarted by the enemies. Some people are going to get saved simply by the enemy's manifestation. So that just shows you, don't be afraid of the enemy. Keep preaching regardless of what you go through because God is going to come out on top at the end of the day. And it's the same thing with the future of this world. The future of this world is going to be in the hands of God. This world is going to bow before the name of Jesus Christ. Soon it looks like the devil's winning. Right now it looks like the devil is winning. But the devil is a loser. The devil would stand around wasting their time screaming at preachers. The devil would stand around uh, uh, causing uh, corruption and confusion in people's mind. And there's people that would embrace that. But God is saying to you today, I got a better life. You can have a greater future. God bless you, brother. Hey, I'm wonderful, brother. Amen. Amen, brother. God bless you. Yes. On the mic? Yeah. Okay. So what do you think about the Orthodox Eastern Orthodox Church? I think there's a lot of truth there. I, just like any church, you know, there's, there's truth. I mean, obviously, anybody that holds that Jesus is the Son of God, it comes in the flesh, yeah. and He's God in the flesh. I mean, there's truth there. I don't agree with certain practices like the, the candles to, um, you know, dead, dead saints or dead people praying for I don't agree with that. I just don't see it in the Bible. I don't agree with iconography. I understand that's very important in the Orthodox tradition. Sure. And I don't, I don't agree um, Saint Luke was the first one to do it. Well, according to according to tradition, but not according to the Bible. So, so the, so there's a few things that I don't agree with. Uh, you know, like certain certain priests that um, uh, yeah. So those are those are kind of okay. certain things okay. I, I don't okay. agree with. All right.
So they come from back then, right? 2,000 years ago. 2,000 plus years ago. Who comes from back then? The one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. Well, which that's anybody great. anybody that holds the, the rock, which is the foundation of the church. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will never prevail. Anyone, that goes back 2,000 years ago. Actually, because the Orthodox Church split from the Roman Catholic Church in, in 1059. So whatever we see today, I, I studied the Coptic Church, I studied the Ethiopian Church, the no, no, no. Orthodox, you know, the Cor Coptic Church is Orthodox. No. Yes, it is. The Coptic is Orthodox. No. They call themselves Orthodox, but they're not. If, okay. Break, if you're if you're a schismatic, you break. You're not so you think the Coptics are orth yeah, not no, orthodox? Not. They use them. Okay, but this is this is infighting with orthodox people, that, well, which is my point. But that's my point. You have a version of an orthodox yeah. you believe to be true, yeah. and then there's other people with the orthodox that have their version that believes to be true. Well, if like the Ethiopian away. orthodox, they have 80, 83 yeah. books. But they're the second they're the second nation that embraced Christianity after Armenia. So if anybody has the right schismatics. Armenia, Coptic, all of them are, so which one's the right one? They broke away from, Port the, what was it, in the 5th century? Okay, but that's the point, man. I mean, who's, away, who's the Holy Orthodox Church? So the one who maintains, so if you break, you don't use Orthodox anymore. Orthodox okay, so what, 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 is the right, what is the right line? So the Eastern is the line that continues. So the now, Greek? Everyone who broke off, broke off, that's it. That's basically what it is now. Here's the other thing. Now you're not orthodox. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about me then. Right, but back then, Jesus says, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, which is its church. Where does your church come from? Where does my church come from? Yeah. I can show you. Do you have a Bible? No. Does it come from? Yeah, it comes from Acts chapter two. Does it come from this? This. It comes from Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two. Yes, on the day of Pentecost. The Spirit of God fell upon them, and they all spoke in new tongues, and they prophesied. Okay, tell it me comes about, from right there. Tell me about tongues. What is tell tongue me about tongues. Tongue? It, a tongue is a spiritual and a natural language, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and according to Acts chapter 2. Tongues is... Tongues means... Languages. Languages. In Greek. Right. Tongues. So, glossy. Glossy. So... Glossa. So, so what happened? What did, what did what did First Corinthians chapter fourteen say about a person that speaks in tongues? He who speaks in tongues speaks not unto men, but unto God. His spirit prays, but his mind is unfruitful. So, so that's a prayer. Yeah, speaking in tongues basically is when the apostles went out. Do you agree with First Corinthians chapter fourteen and the explanation? Bible, right. Not so the explanation. Not the explanation. Speaking in tongues, oh, where oh. you see people going, or that, 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 that's not that's not speaking in tongues. That's speaking in your own gibberish. That's speaking according to you. Yeah. Speaking in tongues is, I, I speak English, and all these people here, we got Asians, we got, I don't know what you've got here. Imagine I'm speaking English, these guys don't understand a word. Okay, that, that. again, that's they according to you. They hear it in their language, and there could have been five different languages in here. Each one, from English, translates right into their language. Wonderful. That's, that's, a, that's one off. form of tongues, absolutely. Yeah. But then, but you're, you're having a problem here. What? You're having a problem in, in uh, explaining First Corinthians chapter 14. He who speaks in an unknown tongue must pray for the interpretation. You know what that means? And if you don't have the interpretation, pray to yourself. Yeah, so you know what that means? It's possible to have tongues and nobody around you interprets. Do you agree or no? No. Okay, so you, you don't even, you're an orthodox, you don't even agree with the Bible, bro. You want me to pull it out? No, it's not an interpretation. Grab my phone. Actually, does anybody actually have a physical Bible here? No, no, you want to know where the church started, and I want. And you're, you're talking about tongues, but you don't want to know the truth about tongues. I know my, my interpretation. What, what is your, okay, I want to know your interpretation of 1 Corinthians 14, though. I'm glad to see you, brother. Yeah, so God bless you, too. What's your name, by the way? Steve. Steve. Steve? Look, look, Steve, look, it's very simple, man. Like, and I just want you to quickly interpret this, okay? Yeah, okay. That's really small. It's really small? It says... If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or three uh, by the most, and that by course, and let one interpret. If there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Yeah, so how do you interpret that? Yeah, so well, I, wanna, I already explained, but I want to know what okay, you think. Fine. What that's do you fine. think? No, I think something else. What do you think? I, I'm not going to get it. Because you just told me whenever yeah. somebody speaks in tongues. That's okay, Dave. That's okay. No, it's not okay, because you just Here's said Here's something it. better. You just want to jump topic. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. But that's fine. <laughs> okay. Think, this think is about, for the record. Think about this. 
they come from 2,000 years ago. Who's they? They, the Eastern Orthodox. So you, you mean to tell me that Jesus Christ was wearing a big hat and what big cape like the Orthodox people? You think the first you you, you think the first bishops no, of no, the no, church no, looked no, like the Orthodox bishops no, and, the, and the Pope of Rome today? No, they they that's no all, exactly. That's thank you. All apostolic. That's apostolic and traditions. Traditions. That's right. So that Jesus that made. Comes, well, the Bible says in many places, keep thy traditions. So, so, you, so where does the tradition say to dress like that? Well, it's tradition. Now, where is it? Where, where, where did that tradition come from? But the thing is this. You see, you, you're telling me about 2,000 years ago, and I'm going back 2,000 yeah. years, True. and you've just proven no, no, that your church no, no, and your you, traditions didn't go back 2,000 no, years? You're, you're taking it to dressing. I'm talking about... Okay, that's one thing. So dress did not start 2,000 years ago. That's a new thing. The apostolic church that started 2,000 years ago. What was it about the apostolic church that made it the apostolic church? Well, you know, you have you have the synods and you have the, you know, um, that they created back then. The thing is this. The thing is this. The gates of hell will not prevail. They were the first. Then you have the schismatics, breakaways, the Orthodox uh, Armenians, uh, the, um, the Coptics, breakaways. Okay, are, are you are you a Greek tradition? Yeah. Okay. Do you do you eat um, um, like blood soup or blood pudding or anything like that? No. No. Do you do you eat any meat with blood? Meat with blood? What do you mean? Do you, I don't know. Do you have meat with blood? No, bro. Okay. I mean, just curious because like I know burger on a barbecue meat with blood. I, I don't know. All meat has I'm just blood. just curious because I know some Greeks and yeah. some Latin people they have uh, a pork blood and uh, the blood right. pudding and stuff. Does that is that a part of your culture? No, 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 it's, no not. it's not your culture. Okay, I'm mistaken. So culture. so the thing is this, right? So the one holy apostolic church. Let's maintain that line. That line comes and still exists till today. Now, anyone else who comes along, anyone doesn't matter, and says, "Well, oh, we have the truth." So. I don't have the truth, right? According to you, you don't agree. I mean, we're just meeting each other today. Yeah, and it's fine. Uh, and, but you hold the truth. Sure. Right? Sure. Right. And you know who that truth is? Jesus. Yeah, but the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The truth. You didn't who exist, is Jesus? You didn't exist 2,000 years ago. Neither did tons of other individuals who came and said, you know, we have the truth. The Catholics don't even hold the truth. They don't even have grace. Protestants are Catholics break don't have grace. They don't. Protestants don't have grace. They're breakaways from Catholics. So you're saying, so, you, so that's, that's funny because right. the first lesson in our Bible study is about grace and you're yeah. saying I don't have grace. No. Ephesians chapter 2 and 8 says, yeah. for by grace are we saved through faith, not of ourselves. It's grace that brought me here. So what are you talking about? I don't believe in grace. Yeah, we don't preach grace. Doesn't James 2.12 say, show me, show me grace without works? That's why we're on the street corner and you're not preaching. We are. We're bro, showing. You saw me. You, <laughs> you saw me doing the works, but you yeah. weren't doing the works. Yeah, I'm, I'm so what's the stuff. manifestation of the faith? Yeah, it's the works. Yeah. The very, every verse you bring, we're doing it, but the yeah. Orthodox Church isn't. Where's the Orthodox priest preaching on a corner? They, I don't see they, them. They don't do it that way. They don't do it that way. How do they do it? They just the, preach to their own culture. And the Bible doesn't They're racist, tell you. Man. No, wait. The Bible doesn't tell you to go out and do it that way either. That of course it does. No, it's if in the situation where we're together, we're gathered. Okay, I want to ask you something. Say, hey, so, okay, you said the Eastern Church is the right church, okay? I believe so. So you're a part of the Greek Orthodox Church? That's right. That's okay, right. how many Greek Orthodox, whether it's uh, priests, parishioners, do you see evangelizing to anybody other than Greek people? Uh, they do it in groups. They don't do it like this. To who? To Greek people? Because every Greek Orthodox Church I've ever been to, it's only Greek people and they would kick me out for having black color skin. Really? Yeah. Very racist. And I, and I know Greek people that have converted and came to our church that were Greek Orthodox. And they would tell me, their parents are racist. And they're Greek Orthodox. So, so let's, not, let's not mince words here. There's a lot of racism in the Greek Orthodox Church. That's why it's called Greek Orthodox Church. It's for the Greek people. It's not for nobody else. So how you how you gonna go how you gonna go? My daughter, uh, Greek, Ethiopian Greek, Ethiopian Greek. What do you mean? You're Ethiopian Orthodox? No, I'm Congolese, but Ethiopian. Okay, she's Orthodox. She's Ethiopian Orthodox. Yeah. Okay, but we're not talking about Ethiopian Orthodox. Of course, Ethiopian. It's the same thing. Not according to him. He thinks you're false. He just said you're false. 
<laughs> Here we go. Infighting between two Orthodox people. He think he's right. No, 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 he think no. he's wrong. They were first before you. First. First. This is very good, actually. Oh, no, they didn't even exist back then. What are you talking about? Do you know? Do you know your Christian history, bro? The first, the first nation that accepted Christianity was Armenia. The second was Ethiopia. Hey, man, come, come here, brother. They went. Yeah, the apostles went to the east. They went to everywhere. They went everywhere. But where was Greece in the line, man? The Greece, Greece didn't even get the gospel till after, bro. You want to be the first, but the Greeks, the Greeks. they weren't the first nation to embrace Christianity. What? Well, actually, they weren't the second. Actually, it was. This is the Greek. The, Greek. the Bible was written in Greek. No, the Bible was written in Koine Greek, but, I mean, but the, the nation new, of Greece the did Testament. not embrace the entire gospel as a nation before the Armenians and before the Ethiopians. Just look it up, man. Yeah, anyways. How come everything I bring you, you just like, yeah, anyways, let's move on. Yeah, because I'm not going to argue, bro. No, just not. So what if I'm right? I didn't come. You, you're not right. And here's why. The gates of hell, I told you, will not prevail. You didn't even exist till no, when? No, I didn't exist. Neither when, did you. When did Neither did your priest. When did the movement start? Which movement? What, what's your movement called? What's your church called? What, what, what it's a church? ministry called Christ Forgiveness Ministries. Okay, were they around 2,000 years ago? Yes. Were they around 1,000 years Christ ago? Christ was around, his forgiveness was around, and so no, was his ministry. No, no, bro. He has one church, one faith. One church. Yeah, and, one, and it wasn't called Greek and, Orthodox Church. One, Show me one place in the Bible where the where the church was called Greek Orthodox Church, and maybe I'll maybe I'll convert. Uh, the name Orthodox, you know, is it in the Bible? Is the word Orthodox in the Bible? No, and that's why you have the Good. so it's not the first church because you don't have the apostolic. You're you're making fun of our name, Christ forgive us, and then you're saying Greek Orthodox Church was there around, but I can't find the word Greek Orthodox Church anywhere in the Bible. So why don't you just call it a biblical name, the Church of Christ, maybe, the Church of God. The apostolic. The apostolic. There was no apostolic Church of, Church of Christ. That, that word was not in the Bible. No, in the beginning, we had the one, holy, apostolic, Catholic and apostolic church. Catholic not being the Catholic church. Catholic being group, a group. We are a group of people. Show me in the Bible where the word Catholic is there. No, that's where the, the, the apostles wrote, came up with, and over the centuries developed the church, like a physical church. So there's actually a place in the Bible where the apostles said the name of the church is called the Roman Catholic Church? There's things in the Bible that say things that are not written in the Bible. Keep that okay, so where are not written, the other keep the written in the I agree with you. So I agree with you. So is there is there a tradition where the apostles said that the name of the church is called Greek Orthodox Church, Roman Catholic Church? It came, it is developed, and it it's not there, bro. It's not there. Let's just be humble. Right, but that's why you will find it in the path of traditions. And, and if you don't have that, it's like you have the faith, and you do. You believe, the Bible never, ever fucking But you're missing the other half, is what we're saying. See, we say you have. You so let's go on your men's planning, I, um, not including women. No. Just but focus. It's, but it's half the truth. It's half the truth. Okay, well, well, look, so far, all the things that you said was half the truth have proved you that I have more truth than what you just brought. I mean, I don't see anybody in the New Testament making icons and praying to them or even making, making uh, candles. mentions any church. I don't see anywhere in the Bible where you see any icons no or anybody. No one in the Bible ever in the Bible because no, because you know God's 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 using her to bring people to Jesus. That's all. So so bad. So brother, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Anyway, so when when you talk about what the true church is supposed to look like, you need to go back to the original text. The original text of the Bible shows us that. That there, there is a teaching that will never, that will always be the foundation of the true church. It's that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And upon that rock, He will build His church and the gates of hell will not prevail. But this idolatry thing, the iconography stuff, the praying to the dead by laying up candles... The apostles didn't do that. They did. Jesus it's never did that. It's, it's there. I, I can't bring him up to you right now. I can, I can reach out to you if you want. But here's the thing. So you're saying there is a place in the New Testament where they sure. let where they up icons of saints? Pray to the saints? Yeah, sure. We honor the saints. Where they put icons of saints in the Bible? Well, 
you're talking about iconography. The, the pictures of the statues that's in the Bible? St. Luke was the first two uh, is in the Bible. Again, this is things that happen. It's not in the Bible. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Traditions, the apostles will tell you this. And the thing is this. You said earlier, uh, which, which is what another thing I wanted to ask you, is uh, what do you got for Holy Communion? We have the, 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 bread, the body and the blood. How do I what? We, we eat it? Just, we drink it? <laughs> what? Okay, so are you a pastor? You're a pastor? Yeah. Alright, who ordained you? Another pastor. Right, yeah. are they from the apostolic line? They go down the line all the way to the day of Pentecost. Right. They don't. They didn't According to you. Do you, do, you, do, you know, do you know that um, the Roman Catholic priests, then the ones that became Protestant, Many of the major ones, like Martin Luther, John Calvin, they were ordained priests with actual apostolic succession. Do you know that? Yeah. Well, you have to look it up. You just look it up, bro. If you break away, yeah. which the Catholics did, you know it. George, don't worry about them, brother. Just come over here, man. Right. Just come this way, because the mic's, the mic's here. How's that mic working? Like the DJ? It's okay. I like the road better, actually. road better? Yeah. Actually, it's, it's good. It's good. So for that case, it's good. Yeah. All right. So if you break, is it on right now or no? Yeah, just leave it. It's fine. If you break, 1054, Catholics broke. That's it. You're done. You don't belong to the tree. You're a branch on the floor, which we pick up and throw into the fire. But they say the same thing about you, though. That's fine. Right. We know the truth, and that's that's the thing, brother. So you cannot be a schismatic. You cannot be a breakaway. You guys started from the Catholics into. I don't know how many sex. Right? He doesn't even understand French. <laughs> he's not from here. Of course he's not from here. He's from Yeah. So so what I'm saying is Okay, you know, we we might have to call the police on you just because you've assaulted me more than once. No, we're gonna call the cops on you, actually. So are you ready for that? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What were we talking about? So well, break, look, break, man. Anyone who broke away from the beginning, gates of hell will not prevail, which means, and that statement you made? Which one? I will build my church upon this rock. Who do you think you met, Peter? No, it's not Peter, it's just a confession, the son of God. I can sit on the bench. It was the confession. Fuck! No, 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 no. She, she's touching him. We have a bunch of witnesses. She's touching him. You have a right to defend yourself. Fuck off, man. Not touching me. Okay. Yeah, we're going to call a cause. You're drunk. You're drunk. And it's clear you're drunk. Go ahead. Right. Uh, yeah, so the, um, the gates of hell, and I will build my church, is Peter's confession. Building his church was him, Christ himself, not Peter. It wasn't I Peter's want you to hold her so the police can arrest her. The Catholics say, well, Peter is the head. Peter's not the head. Where are you going? Just stay. Just stay. Just stay. I know. I know. It's just funny. Go ahead. Yeah. So that's it. So it's not putting it on Peter. Peter's not the head. This confession had nothing to do with Peter. Peter confessed something that was talking about Jesus himself. He is the church. He, I will build my church, meaning it was him, not Peter's confession. The Catholics put Peter, put him up. Okay, we're on the same page with that. Yeah, I agree with you yeah. that it's the confession that that's built right. the church. Right. And that's the that's foundation Jesus. I stand that's on. Jesus. So yeah. anywhere... There's that confession, the true church yeah, is. Yeah. Why? Because he's greater than a building. He's greater than a name. He has his people all over the world. It's a universal church. And even if you think you have some traditions and whatever that I don't have, I am saved because I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. I have Jesus in my life and I'm going to be with Jesus, regardless if I'm a part of your Greek Orthodox Church or not. So that you know what that means? It means the foundation has nothing to do 
with men. It has the foundation. The foundation has to do with Jesus saving, and He saved me, and that's how people get saved. People get saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Mm, you can't have like your faith without the apostles, the apostolic. Church. Okay, so question: Is anybody saved but the people in the Greek Orthodox Church? Yes or no? Sure. Okay, so you just disproved yourself, man. No, I didn't. Look, man, at the end of the day, it's about salvation, bro. You just said I can't have salvation without the traditions of the Greek Orthodox Church. And I said, is anybody saved outside of the Greek Orthodox Church? You said yes. So, therefore, your, your whole argument is flawed. Someone, someone here, at some point, believes in Jesus. Christ dead. But really believe, like, and says, okay, that's it. I'm starting my path with the Lord. Drops dead. Is he saved? Lord, if, he truly question, accepts, right? if he truly accepts, if he truly accepts Jesus, accepts, absolutely. He walked out. Because it has nothing to do with your church or mine. That's right. Is he saved? So he's saved. Sure. That's, that's what I'm talking. Was the Orthodox Church? You know, that means it has nothing to do with whether you call yourself a Greek Orthodox. So what I'm saying, it does. It, it does. There's a lot of things you have to. Uh, you have to follow. Like what? The apostolic give me, give me, the what's church, the apostolic the, uh, teaching? The Holy Communion. Why don't you follow the first apostolic teaching, which is to go and preach the gospel to all nations? Why are the Greek Orthodox priests just preaching to the Greeks? They should preach to all nations. They're not even obeying the apostles. Yeah. But now you're talking about the, the church, the, uh, the clergy, what they do. The faith itself doesn't change. The okay, so maybe they're not As saved. a matter of fact, I don't know if you ever if you heard uh, Peter Poros in the States, the Archbishop in the United States. No, no, I haven't. Yeah, like I just uh, just baptized two uh, two children from a gay couple. Like he he literally that goes against the faith right there. So yeah, there's a lot of crookedness in the clergy, but the faith is the same. Okay, I well, don't care. Right? That's like saying. You're telling me, I can't, you know, there's no salvation outside of the traditions. Your own Greek priests don't follow the traditions, so they're not saved. Who saved then? I mean, look, what about me? What if I, I don't, I don't know what you follow. I don't even I just met you. I don't even know if you're even walking. I don't even know if you're saved, bro. Like, you need to get saved if you're not saved. I don't know yet. I hope you are. But, but listen, at the end of the day, bro, as long as you believe in Jesus Christ, you follow him according to his word, okay, and your heart is in the right place. God, God will direct you. If that led you to the Greek Orthodox Church, and, and but you but you're truly born again, Amen. I, I encourage you keep 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 going. But I'm going to tell you something: if you if you're not born again, I don't care what church you go to, you're not saved. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter. It's not baptism; it's spirit baptism. Yes, you need to be baptized in water, but you need to be spirit baptized. You need to know that Jesus Christ is living inside of you. Truly, water baptism is the union between you and the church of the Lord. Without baptism, forget it. Well, in Acts chapter 19, oh, I'm going to tell you something. There was a man in, in the book, in the Bible, Acts chapter 19, mm -hmm. and uh, he was baptized. And, and this is what it says. Oh, there's baptism everywhere in the Bible. Yeah, there's everywhere in the Bible, but it says, and when Paul, he says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's wrong, actually. It's the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, not just in. So the Bible's the wrong, but you're right. And the, what what version is this? It's King James. King James, that's good. That's what I heard. You, but you just said it was wrong. Yeah. Well. It says Jesus. Man. Yeah, and in two spots I think it just says in the name of our Lord, and other in another spot it says in the name of the Father, the Son, which means Matthew chapter twenty-eight, eighteen to twenty. Triple. Jesus said. Baptized in the name of the triple Father, Son, and Holy, right. Holy Spirit. Which means triple immersion. So how many water. names did he mention, though? Three. How many? Three. He said, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No, in the name of the Father. And What's the name of the Father? And then it says, and the Son. So what's the name of the Father? Father? The Father is not a name, that's a title. It's the Father. No, it's a title. Okay, what's his name? Yahweh. Yahweh? Call him Yahweh. So have you been baptized in the name of Yahweh? And the Son. What's the name of the Son? Jesus. And the Holy Yahweh Spirit. saves. And the, and the Holy Spirit. Yahweh. So, well, they're all one. So, so, the, so that's why the apostles said baptize in the name of Jesus, because the name of Jesus is actually Yahweh saves. No, uh, elsewhere it says in the name of the Father. Now, in, in, in Well, what is the name again? What is the name of the Father? Why are you looking for the name of the Father? Because it says baptize in the name of the Father. What's his name? My father. 
father, father is his father name? Is father. So, call him father. so the son is his name? I got a son too. I got a couple God, of them. God. Baptized in the name of my son? Your it's son? Like, Whose son? And like saying God, like God has all three together, right? The Holy Trinity. So, but God is not a name. God is a title. Why are you giving her a name? Because he says baptize in the name. Okay, so you're going with the, what, the Old Testament? No, I'm going yeah. with the New Testament. And everywhere in the Joshua? New Testament, he baptized in the name of Jesus. You're looking for Joshua. Which is Yahweh saves. Yahweh saves. One name. There's only one name given among men whereby we must be saved. I'll, I'll show you that. It says right here. Yeah. Because no one comes to the Father except through me. So it says right here. It says it, it, says it clearly too. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Father is used everywhere. It says neither is, sal is there salvation. Okay, so because this is the stone which was set at naught, the builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. No other name. It's the name of Jesus. There's only one name. And that's why everywhere in the Bible, it says here, well, I, gotta, I can get it for you. Repent and be baptized every one of you. Because Jesus Christ is the salvation of God. Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh. Jesus Christ holds that name of the Father, the name of the Holy Ghost. It's so, that name. So it's the saving name of God that can save you, and it's only God that can save you. Sure, you can only be saved through Jesus, that's for sure. So is it okay? And no one gets to the Father unless you pass through the Son. So, we know that. So baptism saves? Baptism saves only... Holy oh, Communion saves? It's actually the faith that saves, and baptism is an expression of your faith. So, but even if you get baptized by water, you still need to be baptized by the Spirit. Just because you're baptized by water doesn't mean you have spirit. So many people are sprinkled every day, baptized every day. That's not a baptism. Baptism is a, is a real baptism. It's immersion. Triple immersion. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, listen, man. Maybe we could exchange numbers and talk a little more. We're going to just yeah, preach yeah. to some people. But, I mean, you came here describing, you know, the true church. And... And I showed you why the true church is beyond the four walls of the Greek Orthodox Church. There's Christians all over the world. No, there's only one church. Yeah, there's only one church. How many and churches between you and me could we name right now? I could probably name 100,000 churches. Baptist, Calvinism, Pentecostal, Greek Orthodox, Pentecostal, Ethiopian Orthodox, Catholic. Russian so Orthodox, Orthodox, Coptic church. Orthodox. One church. One, who's that one church? It's not the Greek Orthodox Church. Who is it then? It's the Church of Jesus Christ. Where is it? It's in heaven. It's all around. In you every person coming, that accepts it's, it's Jesus coming. Christ. Yeah, it's a little more. Now. It's not the Greek Orthodox Church, though. They come from back then, so yeah. All right. That's why I said I'm not gonna argue. That's okay, man. Well, you, you came with that question, man. God bless you, man. We're gonna we're gonna preach. Um, praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah, Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, man. I see you have the band. Sasviakal. Sasviakal. You know, uh, one of the greatest things that we could ever um, imagine is the one God uh, of, uh, of every nation coming down to earth to save us. And He did that in a person named Jesus. Jesus is for every nation. He's for the people of India, Punjab, China, everywhere. Why? Because the Bible says clearly in the book of John, chapter 316, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him, whoever believes in Him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. God's promise of salvation is for all people that would believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. And it doesn't matter your religion, doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter what you've done, because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. What that means is that every person on this planet has made mistakes. There's not one perfect person, there's not one perfect father, there's not one perfect leader, pastor, imam, uh, a pandit, God bless you. There's not one perfect priest. Nobody is perfect. That's why all of us need the mercy of God. We all need the forgiveness of God, regardless of who you are. And that one true living, the one true living God sent His perfect sacrifice, His perfect mediator, His perfect prophet, His perfect Son. The Bible calls Him the Son of God. Why? Because He was God in the flesh. The Word of God, the expression of God, embodied Himself, took on human flesh, walked amongst us, and showed us the mercy of God. 
by dying on the cross for our sins and rising again for our justification so that we can be saved. This is the message that we preach. That whoever you are, you can be saved if you would humble yourself and say, you know what? There is no other way except through God's mercy. His perfect sacrifice, His perfect Son, Jesus Christ, is the only way, and I'm willing to accept that. You know, there's a lot of paths in life that people take, a lot of religions people are born in. You know, I was born in a path, but I had to come to my own path. I had to come to my own beliefs sooner or later in my life. It's not about family. Family can be wrong. My father used to smoke. He was wrong. My father used to eat bad. He was wrong. If I were to follow my father's footsteps in everything he did, I would be fat and I would be in the hospital today because that's where he is. He's, he's in the hospital. He can't walk because he didn't take care of himself. You see what I mean? We can't follow our parents to the fullest degree. Our parents can make mistakes. We have to hear God and accept God for ourselves. We have to come to our own path in life somewhere along the line. It's not about culture. Culture can be wrong. Many years ago, I was talking to a friend and my friend said, my other friend said, wow, you guys talk really rough. And I didn't understand. I'm like, what are you talking about? We, we understand it was Jamaican talk. You know, how you, you have a Jamaican talk and another Jamaican. Yo, what's going on? You're talking so loud. And, and if you look from the outside, brother, brother Harry, you're like, man, are they fighting? You know, some cultures, they talk very loud. <laughs> you know, I don't know what your culture's like. Uh, uh, Armenians, do they talk loud? Uh, uh, Arabs? I, I went to China. Chinese, people think Chinese people are quiet. You go to China, like mainland China, they're louder than Jamaicans. I was, I was in the Chinese airport. Like, and they were like, and I was like, whoa. I thought Chinese people, I thought, <laughs> I thought Chinese people were quiet. It's not true. So sometimes we think our culture is right. They probably think that's the right way to talk. But when you look from the outside, it's like, man, these guys, that's not the right way to talk. They need to be calm. They, they need to control themselves. So we can't always follow our culture down the road because our culture can be wrong in a lot of things. I realized that I was wrong in a lot of things. My culture was wrong in a lot of things. But one person that's not wrong is Jesus Christ. One person that's never wrong is God. God is not wrong. And God is reaching out to you and God is letting you know I love you. And if you receive me, if you embrace me, you can be saved. If you're here today, young men, if, you, if, if you're here and you're saying, you know, I believe in Jesus. I don't know if you ever read, you ever heard about Jesus. I don't know what you read. You got a track. But if you're saying today, I want to start a new life with Jesus, I believe that He died on the cross. I don't know if you're ready for that or not, but I can pray with you. Would you, would you like that or would you like to accept Jesus Christ? I don't know. It's a... Amen. God bless you, brother. Are you, are you sticking around? or? Okay. okay. Well, let me shake your hand, brother. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Yes? You want to pray with me? Another time. Another time. Okay. okay. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, no, no, no. I, I don't just give my mic to anybody. No, no, no. I don't give. I don't give to everybody. I give to those who are deserving for me to give. God bless you. Amen. I'm going to pass the mic to somebody, uh, one of our guys who want to preach. Uh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, hey. <laughs> pastor, Pastor, Pastor David, there is a free parking over there. Oh, hallelujah. Pastor, you want to preach? We're still live. Still going? Yeah, yeah, we're still going. Uh, don't we have any dancing in hour? Maybe in half an hour. Yeah? Okay. Don't we have to get going sooner? Well, don't we have to get going sooner? Where are we going Food? Oh, you want to go eat? Yeah, I want to fellowship with you guys. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go for like 15 minutes. Oh, okay. All right. uh, I, thought, I, thought I, was, I thought I wasn't going to preach today. I want to preach. Right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, that's some good preaching. And God is good. Hallelujah. 
People are giving their lives to Christ. Strongholds be, being torn down. The enemy comes in and flees. Man, the Bible says that the righteous are as bold as lions, but the wicked flee when no man pursues. So the devil will try to come in and instigate, intimidate. This is what demons do. They intimidate, they try to manipulate, and they try to dominate. Going to intimidate or dominate or manipulate the born-again Christian. Hallelujah. We stand on the Word of God because we have a, a God, hallelujah, where the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. We serve the King of kings. We serve the Lord of lords. We serve the God of gods. We serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We serve the living God. Not all of those dead gods that you serve and you worship. We serve the living God. The one who said, I am he that lives, was once dead. But behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I hold the keys to hell and death. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve the God that overcame the grave. Hallelujah, the one who gave his life on the cross for sinners like you and me. Hallelujah. Listen, you may not want to hear the message, but the message is for you. That's right, to the person that rolls up their car window. This message is for you, but you can choose to receive it or to reject it. Listen, it's on you. God says that he set before you choices, life or death, blessing or cursing. He says, choose life. Therefore, this day that you and your seed will live. But most people are choosing death. When you choose sin, you're choosing death. When you choose the world, you're choosing death. When you're choosing false gods, you're choosing death. When you're choosing Allah, you're choosing death. When you're choosing Buddha, you're choosing death. When you're choosing Krishna, you're choosing death. But when you choose Jesus, you choose life. You choose the blessing. Hallelujah, the Bible says that the thief, that's the devil, came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have, what's the word? Life, and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And he says, if you believe in me, though you may die, you shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me, says Jesus, he says, shall never die. That's amazing. I mean, at the end of all things, one day we will die. Every single person, 10, 100 out of 100, 1,000 out of 1,000, billion out of a billion, every single person has an appointed time to die. And then, after that comes the judgment. So every man is going to be judged. The Bible says that the books are going to be opened. And every person is going to be judged by the things that they've done with their life, whether good or bad. And here's the bad news. Romans chapter 3 says that there's none that do what? Good. No, not one. There is none that are righteous. All have gone aside. Every single person has not sought after the ways of God. I don't care how holy you profess to be. I don't care how much you grew up in the church. I don't care if you're a priest or a pastor or a minister or a prophet. I don't care if your father was a pastor. I don't care because it's about the condition of the heart. So many people put on a nice robe. They wear the nice chain necklace with the, with the golden cross. So many people get a tattoo of a cross. They get tattoos of scripture and they say, oh, I'm holy because they wear the cross, but they don't bear the cross. Jesus said, if you come after me, you must deny yourselves, not indulge on every single thing that the flesh says to indulge on. He says to deny yourselves, pick up your cross and follow after me. And yet there are far too many people that profess to know God, yet their hearts are far from Him. So Montreal, where is your heart today? Are you right with God? Because the Bible says that the first greatest commandment is to love God. With what? The first on the list is your hearts. All of your hearts. All of your minds, all of your soul, all of your strength. That means all of you, not some of you. 
But the Bible says that if you will seek for God with all of your heart, then you will find Him. He says, if you ask, then you will receive. If you seek, then you will find. If you knock, then the door will be open unto you. But you have to ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And you have not because you ask amiss. And so, so many people say, oh, I want this, God. I want this. I want that. And God's saying, you don't need that. He's saying, I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you need. But you've got to ask for it. And far too often do we ask for the wrong things. People ask for riches. People ask for power. People ask for more women, more men. People ask for more vanity. They want this and that. They want a bigger house. They want more fame, whatever it might be. But these are the wrong things. Why? Because God doesn't hear the prayers of the unrighteous. No matter how much we'll pray to God. You know, I used to be Buddhist. And I used to pray, pray, pray. I would pray for six hours a day. I would meditate for six hours a day. Rec uh, recite vain mantras on a mala bead necklace over and over and over again. And guess what? God didn't hear those prayers. Those prayers are dead. It's a false form of holiness. It's a false, uh, uh, it's, a, it's like an artificial way to try and make a connection with God by human might, by human strength. And yet God is saying that if you want to know Him, if you want to have a true, intimate relationship with God, then you have to give Him your heart. You've got to open up your heart. Matter of fact, He's standing at the door of your heart and He's knocking. It's like this. He's knocking. And yet you're saying, no, -uh, I'm keeping the door closed on your face because I want to keep God out and I want to keep sin in in my life. Well, you've got to get sin out of your life, kick the devil out of your heart, and get God into your heart. The Bible says that God can open up doors that no man can close. He can close doors that no man can open. Well, I'm here today to tell you that when we sin, oh yes, when you do witchcraft, when you fornicate, when you do adultery, when you watch pornography, when you smoke weed, when you drink and become drunk on booze, which by the way, it's called spirits for a reason. Because you are opening up yourself to the spiritual world. You are opening up doorways to your life. So if you want those doorways closed, which those doorways are opening, are open to the demonic. Listen, if you don't want to be tormented by demons like that woman earlier, which she fled all of a sudden when we threatened to call the cops, then she runs away. Of course. Because that's how demons operate. They're afraid. They're afraid. Okay? They're afraid of the name of Jesus Christ. They're afraid. People are afraid. Matter of fact, you need to be afraid of the living God. You need to fear the living God. Montreal needs a wake-up call. Montreal needs to have the fear of the living God. Why is this? Because without the fear of God, people do not depart from sin. But to the opposite, the Bible says, by the fear of God, do men depart from evil. Why do we see evil running rampant in society? Why is it that society is becoming worse and worse and worse? Why is it that people are more sickly, more depraved, more lost, more confused, more angry, more hateful, more unforgiving, more bitter, bitter, more resentful. Why is it that people are depressed? Why is it that people are taking their lives? Why is it that people are cutting themselves? Why is it that people are popping pills? Why is it that people are, are drinking that bottle of booze every single day? Why is it? Because there's a lack of love in your life. Because we try to supplement that hole in our heart, which, but you can't fulfill a void in your heart, which is spiritual, with a physical thing. You never will. You never can. This is why it's a lie from the devil. The lie is to love the things of the world. 
But guess what the Bible says? It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, guess what? The love of God the Father is not in you. And if you don't have the love of God, who is love, what's going to happen then? If you don't have the love of God inside of you, that means that you are empty. You don't have love inside of you. At least not love that's going to last. Listen, this is a crying out. Not because we're here to condemn. Not because we're here to insult. Not because we're here to put you down. We're here because we love you. With what love? Not the love of the world. It's the love of Jesus Christ. We're here today to tell you that Jesus loves you. And that may seem crazy to you. But I'll, I'll tell you what, okay? Nobody has demonstrated the love that Christ has demonstrated by giving His life on the cross. Nobody has ever done that, nor could they ever. But Christ did. Christ gave His life for sinners like you and me. The Bible says that God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Wow, that's amazing. So, He died for sinners. He died for the worst of the worst. That's true love. But the problem is, we think that we don't need the love of Jesus. We think that we don't need the love of God. We think that all we need is more drugs, more sex, more money, more vanity, more partying, more pleasure. You know what that's called? When you just live day by day through pleasure, it's called hedonism. Hedonism. Where you live life indulging in every single pleasure you can without control. No self-control, no reservations. And where does that lead? It leads to the demonic. It leads to being more depressed. It leads to people being 80 years old, being so stubborn, stiff-necked, hard-hearted, where they're bitter, they're angry, they're depressed because they're fed up with life, because they, they tried to live life to the fullest and now they're dead to life because, because there's nothing else the world has to offer them. Because all of those sensations will one day become desensitized. The more you do these things, the more you need to do more of them. I mean, you start off with a little bit of drugs and then you need more drugs because your body becomes desensitized because your body builds a tolerance and then you need more and then you need more and then when that drug isn't enough then you add another drug on and then you need more of that drug and then when that's not enough then you add another drug and then it gets worse and worse the same goes for pornography first you start off with a, a simple video and then all of a sudden years on down the line you're watching just the the, uh, an even more wicked, sickly, depraved, hallelujah, a worse, I don't even want to describe it, but it gets worse and worse. Turns into something, which is already bad when you first start watching it, but it turns into something so depraved. You're like, how did I get here? You see, that's the problem with sin. It's always a downward spiral. It's not somewhere where people think that it's taking them upwards. It's actually a downward spiral. The more you participate in sin, the more you let sin reign and rule over your life, the closer you're going to head to death's door. And then what? What was all that pleasure and that fun for? I mean, this is the problem. Society has never even questioned this. Or if you have, you put it back to the back of your mind. You numbed yourself to this reality that you're going to die one day. You numbed yourself to the fact that you are going to meet God. Even if you don't believe the message, even if you reject the message, it still doesn't change the truth. And the truth is that we're all going to stand before a holy, righteous, and just God. And the truth is no man is good enough to get into heaven. No man can work his way into heaven. No man can do good deeds to earn grace, to earn his salvation. 
No man has the power or the might or the strength to save himself. No man. Because if you could, if you did have the power, you could do it here today right now. You got so many people that are loony, man. They're all messed up in the head. They think that they're the Messiah. You think that you're God. And so you try to play God. You know, this is the thing. Just by not believing and having faith in Jesus Christ as being your Lord and Savior, you are now trying to play God. No matter who you are. Because you're saying that I don't need the only way to heaven. I'll try to make up my own way. So, I'll find a religion or a path that suits me. So now what we got is a bunch of pathways that don't lead to God, or they do, but guess what? All those pathways converge into one path. Monks, or they, well, you got a half right, but the other half is that those pathways lead to hell. They lead to the judgment seat of God, but that's as far as you're getting. But there is one way to the Father. There is one way into the kingdom of heaven. There's one way to be redeemed. There's one way to be saved. There's one way to be healed. There's one way to be delivered. There's one way to know true love. There's one way to have a relationship with God the Father. There's one way to be reconciled unto the Father. And it's through the Son. He is the way. What's that word? He is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And no man comes to the Father but by Him. For there are many ways that seem right unto men and women, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. So every single way that mankind tries to think of outside of Jesus Christ leads to hell. Let's put it to the test. Where do the drugs lead? Death. Where does, I don't know, let's go with philosophy. It leads to death. Where do all those books that you, lead, you read lead to? It leads to death. There's only one book that leads to life, and it's a living book. It's the living Word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, every other book is dead. It's just ink on paper. You might as well just burn those books up. But the one book that's worth your, world, your, uh, your while, worth your time, to read is the Bible. Matter of fact, the only book that reads you is the Bible. You don't read the Bible. Rather, the Bible reads you. The Bible is a mirror to your soul. It shows you and me my error. Shows me my ugliness. Shows me where I need to improve in my life. Shows me how to go to God. It shows me how to live righteously, holy. You know, there's a, there's a saying with this acronym, the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> Sister knows it. Hallelujah. So we got basic instructions, even more than that. But everything you need to know before you leave this place is found in the Bible. You don't need anything else. You don't need the Tibetan book of the living and dead. You don't need the, the, the karmas or the sutras. You don't, you don't need the Quran. Those things lead to hell. But God has given us a guide. God has given us His Word. Hallelujah. And that Word is alive. And that Word can pierce your heart. That Word can give you life. That Word can break off chains. That Word, hallelujah, can wash your minds. That word can heal your broken heart. The word of God is the Bible. The truth is the Bible. Hallelujah. And the truth does not change. So to the Muslims out there, the truth doesn't change. You don't just get another revelation that's different from the previous revelations. You don't just say that you have another prophet that doesn't line up with the rest of the prophets before him, that would be called a false prophet. That would be called a false prophecy. That would be called a false revelation 
Or you might even call it a revelation from the devil. Oh yeah, the devil can reveal things to you. But it's not to reveal God to you. It's to reveal hell to you. It's to reveal, hallelujah, a, a, a pathway that it seems like it's going to go to heaven. It seems like it leads to life, but it leads to hell. It leads to the grave. So, there is but one way to be saved. And this is what I'm going to end on. The only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. He is the mediator between man and God. He is the one that made reconciliation between man and God so that we can have a renewed, restored relationship with the living God. So we urge you, we implore you, City of Montreal, to repent and get right with God. It's time to go back to fearing God, getting down on your knees, crying out to the Lord and saying, Lord, have mercy on a sinner like me. Lord, have mercy on a wicked, depraved sinner like me. And if you're humble and you really want God and you really want change in your life, then you will be saved. Believe on the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So the only way is through the cross. It is through the blood of Jesus. It's by believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Hallelujah. So many people out here today, you heard the good news. You heard the message. Now it's up to you to decide what you want to do with that information, with that knowledge. The wisest thing would be to receive. Not to reject, but to receive. The wisest thing would be to humble yourselves and get right with God. Turn away from your pride. Matter of fact, crucify your pride. Repent of your sins and get right with God. God bless you. Montreal, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah.